I hike a lot, and this past winter, I saw footprints I couldn't explain. I live in Arizona, not far from the Navajo Reservation. I am Navajo. In the middle of nowhere, there are ruins of an abandoned house. There is no roof, just adobe walls, a dried up old well, and a dilapidated travel trailer. Somebody broke into the travel trailer long ago, and pack rats built nests inside the trailer. I've never been inside the trailer because I avoid mouse droppings due to Hanavirus fears. I use the abandoned house and travel trailer as landmarks in my hikes. So this past winter, I went on a hike. At the abandoned homestead, I saw the footprints of a small child, no adults, nothing else. The footprints were 5 inches long and 3 inches wide, and they looked like the soles of sneakers or something a child would wear. I also saw evidence that the child dug around inside the travel trailer, taking out things from within. There was a hodgepodge of household items lined up neatly in a row. Steel skillet, hammer, roofing nails, old Coleman fuel containers, old-fashioned glass bottles, etc. Wondering if I was seeing the tracks of a runaway or lost child, I decided to track the footprints. The tracks led away from the homestead, across the plains, and up the side of a mesa. Three miles away, the tracks intersected a dirt road. At the dirt road, I found tire tracks from a car. The car was parked parallel to the dirt road. The child's footprints walked to the driver's side of the car and got in. The car tracks then did a three-point turn and headed back in the opposite direction. Confused about the tracks, I visited my elder. I relayed my story, and my elder offered an explanation. He told me I tracked a skinwalker. He also told me they have the ability to make their bodies and footprints small. He told me a story of how the magic works. He said the skinwalker was probably looking for something inside the ruins. Update. So recently, I tracked two skinwalkers. What I found was interesting but also unsettling. From the looks of it, the two skinwalkers stalked a group of kids playing with firecrackers on top of a hill. The tracks started at the base of a hill, and they went along a dirt road that ascended the hill. Both sets of tracks were small, and from afar, they looked like the tracks of two little kids. One set wore shoes. The other set was barefoot. The person with bare feet had great arches, not flat-footed, and wide feet. At the bottom of the hill, the person with bare feet walked at the edge of the road and made sure to stay hidden behind juniper trees. Where a wash cuts across the dirt road, the two crossed the road and continued ascending the hill, still staying on the edge of the road. About halfway up the hill, the tracks of the barefoot person changed into those of a dog. The way it did that was noteworthy. I found that the right footprint was human. The next left footprint was missing. Then there was another humanish footprint on the right, followed by a dog footprint two paces away on the left. From there on, it was dog footprints for a distance of five yards, after which it changed back to barefoot human footprints. When I studied the humanish footprint closely, the humanish footprint turned out to be half human and half dog. The heel portion of the footprint was human. However, the toes portion of the footprint was that of a big dog. Also, recall I said the barefoot person had great arches. In the half-human, half-dog footprint, there was a bone or something straight right where the arch should have been, connecting the pad of the dog's paw to the heel of the human's foot. When I realized that that footprint was made exactly while the person was shape-shifting, it sickened me. At the top of the hill, about 10 yards away from the kids, both footprints just vanished. I assumed they either started flying or hopping around. Judging from their tracks, the kids frantically rushed out of there. They left all their trash behind, and they didn't bother to close the gate to their property. 
people normally lock their gates to keep cattle and firewood thieves off of their land. The fact that they left the gate wide open is unsettling. I'm being followed by a skinwalker. So as the title says, I think me and my friend are being followed by a skinwalker. This started a few days ago. I don't know what we did, but ever since about three days ago, we've been noticing very odd things. Our truck started smelling like sulfur and rotten meat, and our trailer, which is very clean, smells like rotten meat as well. We don't have any meat here, we checked. We hear scratches at night while we're trying to sleep, as well as knocking, but that doesn't make sense because we are in the middle of nowhere in Utah, with no towns for at least 20 miles. There is also a Native American reservation literally 200 feet from our property. We decided to go looking for it last night. We walked about two miles from our truck and started to smell sulfur. Then we both saw a six or seven foot tall silhouette running towards us. We ran right back to the truck but it wouldn't start. Pretty cliche I know. I got out and went to the toolbox on the side, grabbed a wrench and started taking of the intake, sprayed some ether in and put the intake back on, and it fired up. Needless to say we peeled out. We were doing about 53 miles per hour to get back to our trailer when I look back and say that. That thing, is still behind us, and keeping up. I told my buddy to punch it because it's right behind us. He floored it but it wouldn't go any faster, it can usually do around 70 to 80 but I wouldn't go past 55. It's a Ford 6.9 ED with a turbo kit in case anyone was wondering. We eventually made it the mile or so back to our trailer. We shut the truck off and ran inside as fast as we could. We locked the door and covered all the windows with blankets. As soon as I got the last blanked up, there was something tugging at our door and trying to open it. So I went and held the door shut. Then out of nowhere the lock started to unlock itself. I tied it to the lock position with a boot lace, and grabbed a hammer, it's all I had to defend myself, and waited. About a minute later I get a text from a girl that I'm interested in, but she never texts me back, saying that she's in trouble and she needs us to come get her right now. I asked what was going on and she said she's getting kicked out of the house. So I get ready to go because this is my only chance with her. I asked her if she had money for diesel and she asked me why. I told her we were coming to get her and she then said why would I want to see you? We haven't talked in months. Um what? You just texted me three minutes ago. So I decided it was probably in our best interest to stay inside that night. I started hearing my name being called from outside by vaguely familiar voices but I couldn't quite recognize them. I never looked outside last night for fear that this thing was just outside the door. I put salt around the door because someone told me that would help, and nothing got in last night so it must have. So now we're here in the morning, there is almost no sign that anything happened last night. No scratch marks on the trailer, no dents, no footprints or paw prints, nothing. So here I am writing this and hoping someone believes me because I need help. I don't know how to get rid of this thing. If you read this far, I just want to say thank you, and I will have another update tonight. To clarify, this post is not me trying to be a karma whore, this post is me saying I'm scared and don't know what to do. There are people saying that it's fake, but I'm just explaining the events that happen and asking for help. I appreciate those of you that are trying to help me and keep me safe. Unfortunately I cannot leave my property as I have nowhere else to go, but I am trying to take the necessary precautions to stay safe. I'm going to the gas station soon to buy salt to make a barrier around my trailer. Thanks for the help y'all. Again, feel free to downvote my post if you like, all I need is help. I understand all the skepticism, I really do, as I didn't think it was real. The thing that really shook me was when the door started to shake and began to unlock. Thanks for reading. Edit 2. 
Another thing that I forgot to mention, my flashlight did flicker on and off a few times. I don't know if that's paranormal or just the battery dying. Thought I should mention that edit 3, day 4. It's now night time and I haven't experienced anything yet today. I plan on keeping a whole log of what happens. The reason it says day 4, is because this whole thing started about 4 days ago. Even though it's dark, I really want to capture some video for everyone and that's exactly what I will be doing. I am not going to try to piss it off, but I'm going to be recording. Not sure how I'll upload it yet, but I'll find a way and be back with an update. Thanks again to everyone that is genuinely trying to help me, because since listening to your advice I have had less experiences, but hell, that could just be because it was daytime. Also, side note, I went to the reservation today, but to no avail. Me and my buddy asked everyone that drove past where the tribe is and nobody knew, we might have to try again tomorrow. I wish I could just call them, but I don't know where I'd find their number. I'll be back with an update hopefully in a couple hours. Edit 4, Day 5, I listened to everyone's advice and made a salt barrier. There are also a lot of people saying that it's a demon, not a skinwalker, so I've been doing research on demons. I have found one very helpful thing. If you don't give it the power to mess with you, you won't get messed with. So I did exactly that last night. I didn't focus on it. In fact, y'all told me to pray, so I prayed. I didn't hear any knocking or scratching last night. No light flickering, nothing. Thank you to everyone that has come forward to help me fight off this entity, whatever it is. I don't think you guys understand how much you helped me, to stay calm, and to fight that thing off. Also, if I do have any more experiences, I will try to record it as well as communicate with it, using an if app. Not sure if the app works or not but I figure I might as well give it a try. Thanks again y'all. I'll be back with an update later. Edit 4 and most likely final update. No new occurrences. I still haven't gotten any help from the Rees, but I haven't had anything happen the last couple of days. Also we got a dog and it hasn't acted weird or anything the last couple days either. I think that whatever was bothering us has gone for good. I just want to say I'm so so glad I had y'all to help me through this, and to keep me calm. I may or may not give more updates but it all honestly just depends on what happens next. Wendigo? Skinwalker? Nature spirit? Okay so the only experience I ever had with a creature slash animal that I couldn't identify has been on my mind and a very vivid memory my whole life. After a dream tonight I think I found out what we encountered, a Wendigo. This is what happened. About 8 to 9 years ago when I was younger me and my friend went to hang out at a park close to his house. No one else was there only me and him and this was my first time being here. There was a small pond, a baseball diamond with a fence, a playground and it was all surrounded by deep woods. We live in eastern United States. We decided it would be fun to get giant branches and draw stuff in the baseball diamond afterwards we would bang the fence around it for like a couple minutes straight and it was pretty loud from what I can remember. We then heard wind but not usual wind but the sound of wind gusting through the forest behind the pond. This was during summer if I remember correctly and there was a lot of foliage so it was hard to see into the woods clearly. We then heard something big like horse size big but fast running through the woods right behind the pond but along it like it was running around it. I saw a big white creature seeming to be 7 to 8 feet tall and probably weighing at least 300 pounds. It sounded like a horse running but lighter. It was super fast I saw it through the pond weeds, it seemed to have fur but I couldn't see its legs, head or if it had a tail of knot there was was too many trees and plants in the way. We dropped our sticks and ran to his house which was in yelling distance terrified. 
We told his family of course they didn't believe us. I haven't talked to him in years and just messaged him today to see if he remembers. As for the dream I had last night I was buying old rare artifacts and art from this guy, showed me this opal slate. I picked it up and said hey this is my birthstone as I'm born in October. I saw what appeared to be a wolf engraved on each side but he said it was a Wendigo. I took a closer look and it was looked like a giant skinny pure white wolf but with a weird shaped elongated head. Scary looking really. And that was the dream. If you google Wendigo you will see exactly the creature I saw in the dream but without the antlers. Like spot on but all white. Is what I saw that day a Wendigo? Did we summon a Wendigo? Does anyone know anything about this creature or myth slash folklore? I didn't see the head or behind as a kid as I mentioned so it could have had antlers and a tail. Any thoughts or insight would be amazingly appreciated. I am of Navajo descent. I am one quarter, my grandfather is pure. This was quite a while ago, but every summer, we used to go and stay at my uncle's house. He has three floors and the basement was pretty much the living room and had a slope that went above ground, so it was only half underground, had windows and everything. So for some odd reason, they leave these huge windows open at night. I've seen skinwalkers snooping around pretty often, and mainly as distant silhouettes or six feet tall coyotes, could you just be normal? So I knew exactly what to expect when you voluntarily leave a window large enough for a person to easily climb through why? Let's go off on a bunny trail real quick. This situation already made me uncomfortable because of stories about when we were babies. My family was staying in my Nolly's trailer and she had those individual square locks and they woke up in the early dark hours of the next morning to find all the locks on the floor the doors wide open, and my brother missing a lock of hair. My Nolly had to do some ritual or prayer or something like that to save him. It worked by the way, he grew up to be successful and is following his dreams. Back on track. So we were all getting ready for bed. My grandma sleeping on the couch, my brother and his friend sleeping on the other couch, and me and my aunt were sleeping on a mattress behind the couch that my grandma was on. Everyone else went camping outside to skinwalker hunt. Everyone got settled and went to bed and my aunt stole my pillow, unamused face. Around one or so, I woke up feeling uneasy. I sat up and looked around. Everything appeared normal and nothing was in the windows but the distant flashing lights that we see oh so often. Does anyone have any idea why skinwalkers do that? And I went back to sleep. So here it happens. 4 AM. I roll on my left side to see my aunt sleeping peacefully, despite having rolled off our mattress. Her hair spread across the floor and she was completely wrapped up, cozy in her blanket. Everything normal. Until I realized that my aunt was on the right side of the bed. And whatever this is was not my aunt. This long black hair was not hers and her knee that was exposed was some sort of joint, I suppose, not human, nonetheless. You know how if you get greatly injured or afraid you either become incapacitated with fear or you fill with adrenaline? I filled with adrenaline. I reached my arm up and grabbed the couch and flipped myself over to the other side. I woke my grandma up in doing so, so I told her to stay awake, but to stay quiet, and it began to move around the couch and back out the window. It was so odd though, the way it moved so smoothly was kinda like the Heartless from Kingdom Hearts. Very snake-like. Some background. I live in a very religious place in the south so a lot of people tend not to believe what they hear slash see because it's just the devil playing tricks. That being said my cousin D who is about 12 years older than me believes in this too, that what he saw was just a demon and not a skinwalker. Getting this story out of him took a while, 
He didn't like to talk about it, but I got him to open up about it a bit. This happened around the mid 90s. D, much like me and my cousins, spent his childhood around my mama's property with his brother. C, and his cousin K, they would play manhunt and tag and such like we did. When this story took place, it was in the middle of the summer and he was around 12. He and C and K were playing at a treehouse that is no longer standing. They had just pulled a prank on K and were hiding from him in the treehouse. D and C stayed in the treehouse until K stopped looking. C left and went back into our mama's house and left D alone. D stayed up in the treehouse and read some comics. The treehouse was about half a mile from the house and was on a hill so that you could still see the house from it. but it was still in the woods at the time my papa was still alive but was in georgia on a retreat so he was not there which let the three boys do whatever they wanted papa would holler for them to come in when it started to get dark because there was and still is a large number of coyotes and bears around the house d decided to read comics all day something b still enjoys and eventually fell asleep He woke up and it was dusk. He heard our mama yelling for him and he began to get ready to leave. As he went down the ladder, he heard a coyote yip and he climbed back up. At this point, he began to get a little upset while telling me the story. He began to explain what the coyote looked like and I realized it was the same one that me and my cousins had seen growing up as well. It looked like it had mange. It had a large tuft of fur missing on its right side and you could see the bear, pale skin, and it had human-like eyes. It snarled at him and bore its teeth. He was taken aback by this and he just sat back down in the treehouse. The coyote sat at the base of the ladder and just looked up at him. He told me he sat there for about 20 minutes trying to figure out what to do. He remembered he had a slingshot and decided that the best course of action would be to try to scare it off with that. He said he shot at it and it just growled more. My cousin was and still is a very good shot with a slingshot. I had a couple of bruises to prove it. He reared back and decided to aim at its eyes because he didn't like the way it stared at him. He reared back and got it right in its left eye. It ran away yowling. D got a little more emotional now. He told me he climbed down the ladder and made a mad dash towards the house. About halfway to the house there is a large dip in the land where there are a bunch of bushes and small trees. When he was about there he told me that he heard coyote yips all around him and swore that a whole pack had come upon him. He just ran from it and while he was on his way up the other side of the dip he tripped and hurt his leg. D started to get upset and had to stop a few times. He told me he got up and started to limp towards the house. This is the part that gave me chills. He told me that he turned and looked behind him and saw not a coyote anymore but a person. And it looked like it had his face. He said it started to walk towards him in an odd way but luckily C and K started yelling for him and as quickly as it appeared it disappeared. D told C and K but they didn't believe him and they told him it was just a trick of the night. something that he still tries to believe in as soon as he told me this he asked me kindly not to ask him about it any more as when he thinks about it he thinks he sees that coyote outside d is a very religious and reliable man so when he says weird stuff is happening i usually believe him the coyote he saw that night me and my cousins have seen before as well along with a stag since the night me and my cousins saw it I have had two more encounters L, the latest one being last year. I will share those in time. One of my cousins who was there with me that night has a Reddit and may soon tell his perception of the events. I have some more stories that happen more in the park than on family land that I'm going to share soon. Several of my friends have had creepy experiences as well and if they are willing I may share theirs as well. Growing up my father was a minister and we traveled a lot. He was an evangelist and there was a story he told me when we lived in New Mexico. 
So he helped another minister on a Navajo reservation. The story went that the minister and another parishioner were out hunting because there was some wildlife that had been killing livestock etc. They ended up tracking what looked to be a wolf or something like it. As they are tracking it, mind you it is getting later into the evening, they see something move. They take a shot and are sure they hit it. It ran away. As they continue on the notice the prints start to change they go from animal to what looks more like a man's footprints. They didn't find a body if I recall correctly human nor animal. Now it was not my own experience, and who knows it might have just been a story to try and scare me but I remember my father telling me that there are some people called skinwalkers that follow after some old Native American rituals. I remember at the time shrugging it off as nothing. The more I read and the more I hear of other accounts there is this nagging suspicion in the back of my mind that I cannot get rid of that there is a shred of truth in every story whether our perception is skewed or not. This is a narrative sent to us by someone who reads some of the posts and wanted to share an experience regarding the notorious Skinwalker Ranch. This person spent a few days last year in the area around Skinwalker Ranch, two of them trespassing in the ranch itself, to satisfy his slasher, we have no info regarding ID, curiosity about the legends around the place. With the History Channel doing a show on the subject, we thought it would be an interesting read for the sub. Once again, we stress that we put the account as is and we have no comment regarding the myths or the account below. All we can vouch for here is that this person was there per bits of his or her GPS journey tracking history and some LIDAR weather measurements output he provided and we compared it with historical data from the NOAA website. The equipment is obviously nothing like the professional weather stations in accuracy, but they were sufficient for verification purposes because the stats were proportionally the same. The data point outputs, random non-consecutive waypoints, were given to us for verification, with the condition that we do not share it because this person was within the ranch illegally and does not want to get into trouble with the law. I want to start by telling readers that I do not advise or advocate trespassing into private property for any reason. I am really not that kind of person, but the curiosity was too much and I had just bought some new toys that were just begging to be used. I sort of feel a little bad about that part now, actually. Also I want to come clean and say I am not an experienced professional in the field or trained scientist, I'm just a university sophomore studying atmospheric physics, and much as I love my new gadgets they are hardly what NASA uses, so I wouldn't hold it against anyone if they think I'm talking out of my ass. But I did give mods some of the data I gathered in the trip to show that I at least did serious legwork and got on-site measurements. So basically my plan was to focus on environment info since that is my interest and what I know about the best. Plus it sounded logical that for UFO investigation, and that's the main legend about Skinwalker Ranch. If I run into any cattle mutilation or any of the other stuff I'll try to take pics and any clues I find, PS I didn't find any. Basically my trip, or hike where necessary, would be something like. 1. Start from a point 10 miles or so away from the ranch. 2. For two days I would take measurements following a path like a spiral towards the ranch. 3. If the coast is clear, spend a night in the ranch and see what happens and take measurements, but get off the property in the morning so it's less likely I get caught. 4. Go back to ranch when sun goes down, still taking measurements the whole time. 5. Leave ranch at dawn again following spiral path away from the ranch for another day. So five days in all worth of atmospheric data around the ranch. Sorry I won't give you a detailed account of those five days, again the less info I provide the less chance anyone can catch me lol. But I will summarize it and what interesting and strange things that happened. One thing that always bugged me about the investigations I saw on TV shows is how they would just dick around in the ranch. It's not really all that big, 
and if you're looking at whether you need a larger area to gather data that's useful. I was fairly sure that whatever they found as weird in the ranch was probably happening outside of it too if they looked. So that's way I mapped out the trip like I did going in and coming out and took down a lot of numbers. Now some unexpected stuff DID happened that threw me off. I did not get abducted despite my best efforts. It wouldn't meet Hollywood standards for horror movies. But for a normal person who's outdoors a lot it was altogether so weird and abnormal that I almost just cut the whole thing short. There were times when birds would just either vanish or go mute. Without saying too much, I'm from a very similar environment and climate and that doesn't happen. Definitely not that time of year and most definitely not this strange pattern like they're playing red light. And I kept finding a lot of dead ones, some in groups. Coyotes were acting nuts and way too bold. Twice and in places over 40 miles apart, so there's no way it's the same bunch. These aren't urban coyotes either, a pack was in my face. They weren't acting like predators hunting food, more like a coked up street gang looking for trouble. Not even the SUV scared them. In the first encounter, there was this one yapping BS who kept for some reason rearing up on his hind legs. My readings were frequently spiking all over the place. Like I said before, the tools were hardly military grade, but I did not think they were such cheap junk that they would malfunction that bad either. I also saw this a couple of times, still more than I would expect. I saw weird clouds. No, not flying saucers, I at least knew what these are. They are lenticular clouds forming up. Just clouds, but the number I saw in the trip is more than I thought I'd see my lifetime. This kept happening within and in the immediate vicinity of the ranch. I saw a dust devil. Yes, I know dust devils aren't a big deal, but I'm not used to seeing a whole bunch of them. And just about evening starts specifically in a relatively small area. So after I got home and chilling for a couple of days getting urban again, I looked at the numbers. And I saw something that is peculiar but explains at least some of the weirdness I saw. The area the ranch is in at about an 8 mile radius, again, just looking inside the ranch is very uninformative, is almost like a mini climate surrounded by larger weather systems. The measurements of the area isn't remarkable by itself, it's only when you look at the bigger picture you see that a lot of the time, not always, but still a lot, it sits inside a different system or between two that are at opposite ends of the measurement scales. What I mean is that around its weather, there's other weathers that have higher and or lower temperatures, humidity, winds etc. that are also different as you go higher or lower off the ground. I won't show my data, like I said, but you don't need to. You can find this information online, and as an example there's this one. You can type in Skinwalker Ranch and fiddle with the data to see for yourself. I know I sound like a dork, but as I said before they at least explain some of things, like the UFO clouds and dust devil herds that I kept seeing. I was never good at explaining meteorology in words very well, got a bad grade once because of that. So I made a quick diagram to explain how these differences in measures cause anomalies like lenticular clouds. I don't know much about birds, but this might explain the bird stuff too because what makes those clouds can also cause a lot of turbulence which can blow the birds off course or they might hit a plane that's also caught in turbulence or something. It can also explain why I kept seeing them in groups. The rest of the stuff I don't know how they happened or even if it is relevant to the above at all. I do know that environmental anomalies have a knockdown effect on other things especially if they happen consistently over time. I let everyone make up their own minds. But even if what's going on in the atmosphere sort of explains some things, it's still strange. Why are these fluctuations happening? How do they change when the topography is not so different? There is some higher ground some distance away, but they're not that high. If nobody beats me to it, I'm hoping to do this again legitimately and make it my graduation thesis.
I had an encounter with a skinwalker. I woke up to the sound of thunder, it was raining that night, and I heard knocking on my window and it sounded way far from heavy rain and I looked at the window and saw a fist draw back from it. This scared the living crap out of me. I knew a lot about skinwalkers but never had been attacked by one that night. How did this start? Well, I was talking to my dad on the highway at night about skinwalkers and he said if you say skinwalker too much they will come for you. They can hear you if they're in the same county, and then I said the word one last time then heard a roar that evolved into a high-pitched human-like scream. It happened last year. I'd like to share my Wendigo slash skinwalker experience. This happened about seven years ago when I was 16. This story requires a little bit of backstory so please bear with me for a second. My dad's side of the family lives in deep, deep southeast Texas. I'm talking like 100 people to a town deep. That being said, my cousin lives down there. My cousin grew up learning every single inch of the woods. Every sound, every smell, you get the point. He could hear an animal moving way off in the distance and tell you what it is without any hesitation. I want to preface this by saying I don't know what exactly this thing was, but the closest I could come up with it must have been either a Wendigo or a Skinwalker. Alright, so the night of the encounter. Me, my cousin, and my best friend all head into the woods. You know, dumb 16 year old. We all had shotguns, as we like to raccoon hunt, or just shoot at random stuff for fun. If you've ever been in a pine forest, you know there's pretty much no lighting from the moon when it gets dark, so we brought headlamps to be able to see where we were going. Eventually, we come upon a high bank of a creek. Probably about a 15 feet drop or so I'd say. You could almost say we were on a peninsula, the water flowed around the spot we were at in a U shape. We decided to sit down, turn off our headlamps, and look up at the trees to see if we could see any stars. After sitting silently in the dark for about 15 minutes, my friend goes to turn on his headlamp. My cousin grabs his arm, and whispers to the both of us, there's something about 20 yards to our right, and it's moving towards us. I've never been more terrified in my life as when I listened, and heard heavy, bipedal footsteps making its way to us steadily. Like this thing wasn't searching, it was beelining. At this point, we all just freeze in place and listen. It reaches the bank on the other side of the peninsula, and without skipping a beat starts descending. We hear it enter the water, and eventually come to the other side of the creek. The side we were on. It starts scaling the drop off, effortlessly. This thing kept the same pace whether it was level, descending, in the water, or climbing. It's now only about 30 feet away or so at this point. My cousin whispers on the count of three, we all turn on our headlamps and shoot. One. The footsteps keep getting closer. Two. They're heavy. Heavier than any animal that would be in those woods. Three. We turn on our headlamps and, nothing. No sound of something scurrying away. No more footsteps. Nothing. We hightailed it out, with one person guarding the rear. What do you think? I'm convinced I almost had a deadly encounter? Am I crazy? My family is from a rural area in India. My mother lives a few states over because of her job and she was sharing stories since the area she lives in has a reputation for witchcraft and black magic stuffs. I was an atheist and didn't believe in paranormal until I got my blood sucked by a edek what they're called but they leave behind temporary bluish marks on where they've sucked the blood from and got really sick after but that's a story for another day sorry I am rambling I'm just experiencing so much emotions. There is this guy in my mother's town who by day seems normal, 
little slow at grasping what people are saying basically lower IQ than average person he moved into the town in search of domestic work to feed himself. A girl from the same home to one as his was my mother's colleague as well as neighbors. This guy would come as a dog or cat at night and scratch her doors, windows consecutively for three days until the girl decided to confront him the next morning. She told him to stop and that she knew it was him. From what my mother described, his expression changed and he walked away slowly while maintaining eye contact with the girl and giving her a sly smile. Later mom found out that he was kicked out of his town because they got to know he was one of those. I've always heard of the word skinwalker. So I just wanted to ask given by the experience above is he a skinwalker? I can't seem to wrap my head around it. My mother also said it is passed down to generations. I live near a very large, very popular national park. Locals here, like myself, are pretty aware of the goings on near here. Strange sounds, strange creatures, and strange disappearances. I have dealt with these myself in the past on hikes and even just relaxing in the park. Here is one that still freaks me out to this day. I was at my grandma's house that's deep in the boonies, the only road to there is a gravel road that is pretty much washed away so without a good car you're not getting out there anyways. My cousins lived in a trailer with their moms right below my grandma's. We played all sorts of games which mainly involved me getting chased, I was the youngest. My grandma was in the hospital with my aunt so our older cousin, who I'll name Dee, had to watch us. Dee was, and still is, the only cousin that's older than us that we still hold in high regards, he would mess with us and play around but actually cared about us. The whole day we spent playing around but we would usually play more at night. Like hide and seek, tag, etc. We had been playing pretty far away from the house and it was starting to get dark. We decided to go back to the house and grab flashlights and play manhunt. Of course I was the one being hunted. I ran pretty far into the woods on the other side of the property and hid behind a log. I heard my cousins getting close so I ran and they saw me. We ended up running to the very back of the property line, almost a mile from the house, and we saw my cousin D. He looked at us and kinda growled and we all ran from him, thinking it was a game. We ran back onto the gravel road and we saw him walk out of the tree line but he did weird kind of gloatingly in a way. We ran into the house and decided to barricade the door to play a prank on him. We moved a couple of things in front of the door but decided to move the big coffee table in front of it too. As we loudly scooted the table across the floor, D came into the living room from the master bedroom running his eyes. We had obviously woke him up from all the movement and he was mad. We told him about seeing him chase us and he got wide-eyed. He told us to go to our bedroom and stay there. We sat in the bedroom for about 20 minutes and he came in and told us not to worry. That it was just him scaring us and we went on with the night. It wasn't until about 3 years later, when I was 13, that he told me the truth, it was a skinwalker. He told me that he has dealt with it when he was our age and told me his story which I may share as well someday depending on how far this goes. This is of course just one story. There's loads more. Hi all, I'm not sure if this is the right place to post this but it's been freaking me out for the past few days since it's happened and I wanted to see if anyone had any advice. I want to start by saying that everything that I'm about to talk about is true and if you don't believe me, I'm sorry. I live in a woods in Northwest Ohio. My house is back about half a mile in the woods down a long driveway, and my property is surrounded by trees from each side except for the back, which has a field that alternates soybeans and corn every year. We're a few minutes away from a very small village and about half an hour out from bigger towns. 
I just wanted to give some background into the area before I say what happened in case that helps at all. I've had weird stuff happen before, I've encountered what I think are not deers. Once there was one in my yard walking around apple trees, which isn't uncommon but the thing was huge and ugly and it just looked wrong. There was also one next to a country road I was driving down with my friend once. A few years ago I was dog sitting before I had a dog and I was out with the dog walking near the field and he turned around as there was a huge splash in our pond and started growling and howling. Other than that, the dog was really friendly and I'd never heard him growl before. I joked saying it was a frog man, like the Loveland frog man, but ignored it for the most part. Last year my family got a dog of our own and he's a hound dog so he chases and barks at everything, but sometimes he gets weird about the pond too, and he'll growl and howl at it. He doesn't really growl other than that. But the incident that I came here to talk about happened a few days ago. This year is a corn year in the field behind our house, which I always hate because I can't see out past the first couple rows and I've always thought it's creepy. Before crops are planted, I like to rock hound and metal detect in the field and surrounding fields so I know the land very well. I have found Native American artifacts in the field before too, and there's a couple wood scattered throughout the fields and a big creek runs through it too. I mainly stick to the field directly behind my house because I don't want to wander out too far, the farthest out I've gone is probably no more than a mile. A couple days ago I was out with my dog, walking along the line of dirt between the trees in the back of my property and the field, when my dog started growling at the corn. It obviously scared the hell out of me and I was yelling at him telling him to stop. When I was little we would get coyotes around there too, so I figured it was a coyote. Since I didn't want myself or my dog to get hurt by the coyote I started walking back to the house but my dog wasn't having it. He was pulling on the leash and baying and howling and losing his mind. He doesn't usually bay and howl like that unless he's treat a squirrel. So the fact that he was just screaming into the corn freaked me out. We started walking again and then I heard a cat meow from the corn. I was like, oh, okay, it's just a cat cool. But I have a cat, and there's plenty of barn cats that cross our property and my dog has never lost his mind over a cat like that before. So I keep tugging on his leash and I'm like dude let's go, you're freaking me out. And the cat keeps meowing and it's getting like uncomfortably loud for a cat meow, it sounded like it was a lot closer than it was. And then the cat started growling but it sounded like a big dog like big growls. Then the corn started rustling, bigger than what a cat could do. Luckily at that point I was just about back to my yard and the growling kind of developed into what sounded like a yell slash scream from a person. I was dragging my dog, my dog was growling, his hair on his back was sticking up, I was scared and shaking. It was absolutely terrifying. I went back into my house and told my family what happened and they were just like okay, cool, whatever but I was nearly in tears. It was scary. Again, I don't know if this is the right place to leave this story, so I'm sorry if it isn't, but those sounds have been replaying in my mind over and over and I'd love to get some explanation or something on whatever happened out there. Nothing like that has happened since, not that I want it to. But yeah, if anyone has any explanation or advice, please let me know. My experience on a first skinwalker sighting. So my family wanted to take a trip up to Kentucky around the London area and obviously it's in the country. It was me, my mom, my stepdad and my brother. We have an RV up there inside of an open barn. So it was around 9 at night and it was just me and my 10 month old German Shepherd in the RV at the time. The windows were very open and there was hardly any light. I was listening to music and remember hearing this loud distorted bark. Now we do have dogs but they never bark unless someone is pulling up. And we are out in the middle of nowhere so I thought it was them. 
This didn't sound like any of them. If they did see someone they would have not stoked. About five minutes later I look out the window because my dog stared for about 10 seconds and I see this bald pink faceless creature. It is way harder to describe than you think but it didn't look like human. It wasn't exactly facing me so I couldn't tell but it seemed interested in the goats that were in the barn. The next morning I was afraid of going outside and I look a picture of one of out dogs that looked like a skinwalker to me but I was just paranoid. I told my mom and she took it as a joke. Same with my brother so I came on here. I was scrolling through Horror Den of Misfits YouTube channel a while ago when I found a video describing what a skinwalker was and it genuinely reminded me of a creature that I've witnessed in the forest behind my house. There's been a weird deer-like creature that crawls around the forest at night. I used to go camping out in that forest with my girlfriend, but we'd always see a white-looking diseased deer that would crawl around the forest and now I'm convinced it is a skinwalker or a not deer. Any alternative explanations? I've been asking in other subreddits for help but nobody else has had an answer for me yet. It has white skin and I doubt it's an albino or anything. My girlfriend says they're angels in her native tongue. I was and still am never sure what it is. Here's the detailed story of my sighting. Hello, I live in the rural part of the US, in the woods, in a small home. I'm not too deep into the woods, Teresa town just half a mile from my home, and the driveway to my house is essentially a straight drive to this town. Why is this important? Because of what I'm going to speak of in this post. This may seem insane but I have been encountering a diseased deer within my woodland property. This deer has been alive for ATLE's three months, and I have seen it four or five times. My girlfriend however, claims to see it every day. Furthermore, she claims that this deer is an angel and that it whispers to her. At first when she said these things I assumed she was just teasing me, as in the past I had suggested it may be a skinwalker or other mythical creature. However she has quickly become obsessed with this creature. For example, two or three weeks ago we were eating dinner together at home. We were eating some cheap gas station hot dogs, as we were experiencing a major power outage and most restaurants were closed, and most of our food was spoiling. She suddenly looked out the window at the forest and became saying what amounted to I see it, I see the angel, it wants me close to it. She suddenly jumped up and ran outside. At this point I am freaking out. One of the people closest to me in my life has just proclaimed a completely insane statement and ran outside into the freezing night. I quickly shoved on my shoes and coat, with no socks on, and joined her outside. It must have taken me just a minute to get outside behind her, but she was already 30 feet away from me and into the forest. Keep in mind she's barefoot and wearing long pants and a sweater. I catch up to her and she's just staring into the forest. I asked her if she was okay and she just laughed it off and said oh I thought I saw that deer outside again, ha ha. About a minute later we were both back inside. This incident has been rolling around in my mind for a while, however I could have shrugged it off as her just being slightly paranoid about her angel deer she keeps seeing, or once again her teasing me. But just three days ago something happened that made me realize I cannot simply ignore her actions anymore. I wake up, for no apparent reason at 2 am at night. My beside is empty and my curtains undrawn. I'm tired so I don't think anything of it, just shift around. The second I got comfy and convinced myself she was just in the bathroom, despite hearing no noise, or taking a midnight walk, which we usually take together, I hear a scream outside. I jolt up and have the worst heart palpitation of my life. It's clearly my girlfriend screaming. I hop up and jolt outside with a speed higher than my heart's BPM. My girlfriend is laying outside nearly naked looking up at the sky pointing with one hand saying he's back, he's back. I am freaking out now, I literally started crying. 
I don't know why, I just started crying. The sight of her just laying there screaming at nothing made me so worried for her. I brought her back in crying and was debating calling mental health services. I didn't just want to go back to sleep and risk her doing something to herself and getting back up. But she's never had any mental health issues before this. The worst I know of is that she used to have panic attacks and went through an emo phase in college. But after weaning off of caffeine her panic attacks subsided. And besides the incident of her running outside that other night, she's never had any issues with mental health. So this is all a shock to me. The next morning, I stayed up all night talking to her. She just wanted to forget about everything, I asked her if she thought she needed therapy, she seemed confused about this. She said she was fine and was just stressed about our future and her career. From that day on, she's never mentioned the deer slash angel. Am I just being an overprotective boyfriend, if not what steps should I take to ensure she's safe? I'm sorry for rambling and the strange timeline of events i'm not a big internet user if you couldn't tell update sorry for not giving any updates on my previous posts a snowstorm knocked out a power line for about a week and i forgot i had read it for a bit there however i have another sighting to report i was staring out the window just blankly no internet girlfriend is away for the weekend and I see something stir in the snow. It's that damn deer again. I just hobbled away and I was so spaced out. I kind of just jumped back in shock and ran outside, but it was too late, a hobbling deer outran me. How? It just disappeared virtually in front of me. I could say it was walking back into the forest, however it was walking towards my driveway, so at this point I am convinced this is not a diseased deer or anything. This is some paranormal creature or something messed up. I talked to my girlfriend about this and she just said it's my guardian angel and laughed it off. I must preface this with a few things. This encounter is second-hand but was told to me on multiple occasions by the person that experienced this. I am a natural skeptic and cynic so I can't say I 100% believe it but his telling of it was pretty simple yet concise and did not vary between retellings. I've known this guy for many years and his advice and input on just about everything is well-reasoned and always helpful so I'll just take his word on it even if with a grain of salt. Also keep in mind I am not a seasoned writer and past and present tense may get a little jumbled but I'll keep it clear and accurate as best I can. So let's get down to business. My friend, we'll call him Marv, likes to go solitary camping on occasion to be one with nature and the things that go along with that. He is also an avid gun collector and enthusiast. I don't remember exactly when he said this took place but it was few years back and he decided to go camping on a whim. He packed his gear, a few guns, hunting rifle and .45 sidearm specifically, and headed out into the country onto a vast swatch of property owned by a friend of his. He had full permission in the works. This happened close to the Kasachi National Forest in south central Louisiana. I won't be any more specific other than that. Safe to say it's miles and miles of forest and wilderness. He liked to hike in pretty deep and camp at a specific spot he found a few trips prior. These details are kind of sparse as it's not really the meat and potatoes to this encounter. So he made his way in and set up camp in his usual small clearing for the night. Skipping ahead a few hours it was now late afternoon when he heard leaves crunching and twigs being stepped on. He assumed it was an animal at first and got up from cooking something on the fire to try to get a look. He gazed in the direction of the noise and saw a man approaching through the trees a good many yards away. He has described his etiquette for dealing with other people in very remote places as always being cautious as more often than not people he comes across are armed like him. 
He tries to stay as friendly as possible but still keeps his guard up looking for any ulterior motives as you never can tell what some folks are up to out in the middle of nowhere. He'll make chit chat with them, find out generally what they're up to if he can, and occasionally share a meal etc. He's never really met anyone nefarious as of yet other than this situation and maybe one other but that's a whole other ordeal. So one thing that sets off small alarm bells for him is he knows he's the only one with permission to be on this property and secondly this guy is not dressed for the location at all. He said the guy was wearing a white t-shirt, short blue jogging shorts, and white socks and sneakers. Mind you Marv is miles out in the middle of the woods away from any paths, roadways, houses, or anything really. Nobody is going to casually stroll into his current location dressed like that unless they are lost slash confused etc. It was early fall but not quite cool, very normal for Louisiana, so there's a ton of mosquitoes, ticks, and other insects aplenty. You're not going to have most of your skin exposed if you can help it deep in the woods. I know that all too well from personal experience myself. So Marv assumes something might be up and calls out hey there, do you need help or something? Pretty loud. Definitely loud enough to be heard. The guy keeps walking forward staring directly at him. Marv is starting to get unnerved and as I said I know this guy well and he's cool as cucumber in a tense situation. Getting more uneasy, as the guy is closing the distance, he gets to his feet and loudly declares hey man, can I help you with something or what? The guys is 15 to 20 feet away from Marv now standing at the edge of the clearing in the forest. The guy looking Marv dead in the eye, speaks, and clearly says help me. Marv said he was already starting to actually get worried at this point because he said the way the guy said this was as if something that didn't know exactly how to talk was saying help me or at least that's what he first thought. It did not sound right. The guy still unmoving says help me. Again slightly more emphatic but really just slightly louder. Marv said this is when he picked up on what was truly wrong about this. He said the timbre of the voice was more female and actually sounded like a recording being played back and that the guy's lip and mouth movements weren't matching up with the phrase. It's like he was just opening his mouth, emitting the phrase, and closing it again. Marv asked what do you need help with? Not daring to back up or move whatsoever. The guy still standing motionless as well still looking directly at him said help me again and repeated the phrase another three times slowly but not louder in volume. Marv now totally unsure of what the hell is going on interrupts the guy by barking all right you need to go now unless you actually need my help. Do you need my help or not? He continued loud and firm in tone. The guy didn't miss a beat and started up with the help me's again and made as if to take another step in Marv's direction. Marv told me that he then did the only thing that made sense in the moment and drew his .45 semi-auto pistol and pointed it at the guy telling him again you need to go. I don't care what you want. The guy starts to get more animated and agitated actually starting to say the phrase louder now over and over but not stepping closer or backing away. Marv did what he thought was right given his current predicament. Assuming he was dealing with an unstable or potentially dangerous individual, and discharged a round into the ground in front of the guy. Now this is where it gets fully batshit crazy, I'm not kidding, as the guy stops uttering the phrase, goes silent, and still staring at Marv full on backflips slash somersaults, like gymnasts do, backwards into the woods and immediately out of sight. Yes you read that right, now I know what you're thinking because I had and still have the same reaction. That sounds like BS for sure but Marv gave no indication of falsehood and told me this multiple times each time in dead serious demeanor. Yet Marv said the guy back flipped away effortlessly as if pulled back by an unseen tension coil. He described it as completely humanly unnatural and totally out of place. The guy had just appeared and repeated the same phrase over and over eventually becoming almost frantic before Marv shot at the ground before him causing him slash it to flee. 
Marv said he stood there focused on the forest where the guy just flipped into and saw and heard no further movement. It was like the guy had never even been there. He stayed like this as the sun began to set and the normal night noises crept in. As I mentioned before Marv is a pretty unshakable fellow and actually stayed in the area for the night and next night before returning with no further incident. When he had told me and some other friends about this of course we asked many questions. We asked him to elaborate on the guy's speech sounds. He said the more he thought about it after the incident the more sure he was that it was definitely a female's voice coming from the guy. It was like he slash it had heard someone say this and mimicked it like a parrot or other talking bird would. Almost like a lure. He doesn't know what it wanted. He slash it, yay it might qualify as an it, didn't give any indication to follow or utter anything else. He slash it reacted immediately to the gunshot and you know what followed there. He has been back to the property since with no other strange occurrences. The only other minute detail that I can think of is he did remember hearing during the early morning of the first night what sounded like a gunshot off in the distance and it did sound eerily similar to his .45. He thought he may have heard it again on the hike back out. There are people that hunt in the area of course and it could have just been that. He couldn't be sure. Since this incident, and one other he had in a complete different location, he did some online research of the whole Kasachi area and found many legends, stories, and supposed encounters dealing with skinwalkers and other unnerving bits of Native American folklore in the area. Not to mention mimics and other similar supposed creatures. A lot of his encounter lines up with these tales but there's nothing tangible to prove it of course but even as a skeptic it does make me wonder about strange things in the remote and untouched areas of our world that can't be explained. So I can attempt to answer questions about this but I'm only going off what I was told so keep that in mind. I can potentially ask Marv about the ones I can't answer myself as I should be hanging out with him in a few days. This all took place a long time ago, when I was around 14. For background info, I am an indigenous Mexican and Navajo. The cultural difference is somewhat large, and I tend to practice my cultural roots within my Nahua side, but I'm also very close to my native family that resides in the States. My family, four of us, had planned a last minute trip to Arizona. We had made arrangements to stay with some friends that lived on the reservation. My parents thought it would still be a good idea to stay at least a few days since that meant they got to see their family they hadn't seen in years, and my brother and I would be able to see our cousins, whom were very close in age to us, especially since it meant less money they had to spend on a motel. The first day, being the moody teens we were, my cousin and I thought it would be fun to roam the open fields that surrounded the res. We were hoping to get away from all the noise in the house and to avoid the same boring adult questions, how school going? Etc. We wandered pretty far, far enough that the houses were out of sight. The walk was fairly normal until we began heading back. About halfway back, we noticed a coyote off in the distance. Nothing out of the ordinary, but we obviously didn't want to get close to it. But that's when it got kind of weird. We heard a whistle coming from somewhere around where the coyote was, something like what you'd hear when someone was calling a dog back. My cousin and I got kind of spooked as we didn't see another person around, and the last thing we wanted was to be two small girls alone in the field with a creep hiding around as the sun was setting especially given the number of murdered and missing indigenous women. We just kept walking, keeping our distance, but that's when we had an inkling we were being watched. We looked around and noticed the coyote was still a few meters behind us. My cousin got spooked and we picked up the pace until we got back home. On day two, the headaches started coming. The next morning was whatever. The adults had left us and driven off to go gamble, so it was just us four teens left alone for a few hours. 
As night rolled around and our parents had texted us to check in to tell us they'd be out late, nothing new. We all just pulled out our Game Boys and Nintendo devices and played for a while until my brother called me over to the window. He told me he heard footsteps and leaves outside and wanted someone else to look out the window with him. I did, and didn't see anything out of the ordinary other than noticing the eerie silence. But after that, it was quiet for another hour or so and then the noises became more frequent. This time we all heard them and the house became silent as we all just listened. At first it was leaves crunching, then taps at the window inside of the house. But then there was such a weird smell. It wasn't super terrible or disgusting, I guess, but just strong enough to be nauseating. My older cousin told us he thought it was a skinwalker trying to mess with us. At the time, I thought it was a dumb idea and probably just the res dogs, if you've ever been on the res, you know how crazy those damn dogs are. It just kept getting creepier though. Faint talking outside could be heard around 9 and then, my gods, the most painful headache I've ever gotten just appeared so suddenly. I remember crying and feeling so dizzy. I've never felt such pain before. The adults returned shortly after and the more noise they brought with them, the better I felt. We went to bed, and that was that. Day 3, this time it was midday and I was looking out the open window just trying to get some fresh air while everyone else was in the living room. And I saw the same coyote. This is very odd, as coyotes are mostly nocturnal. They're not very active during the day and they don't tend to get close to humans just for the hell of it. This time, though, it was closer and the sun allowed for all of its details to be made out. Standing a few meters away, it was big, bigger than the coyotes I usually see. It was longer and it just looked at me, unblinking. I heard the same whistling sound and as the hair on the back of my neck and arms stood up, I noticed its eyes were oddly discolored and not very animalistic. Patches of fur were missing and looking at it made me feel sick, so I closed and locked the window and left the room. When night came around, the adults went to bed, and I was having such a hard time sleeping. I remember I had the chills and a fever, and the tapping and crunching came back. It felt like it was so much louder than it actually was. My younger cousin lay in bed with me. She said the noises were keeping her up and that she had a bad feeling. That spooked me even more. We fell asleep after a while, and then it was the end of that trip. We left for our hotel for the rest of the week, and everything was fine. Even years later, every time I visit my family on the res, I always find myself on edge. Though nothing like that has happened again, my cousins and I still remember. You can chalk it up to whatever you want, may that be a mangy res dog or a teen's active imagination, but nonetheless, it was scary as hell. Especially when you grow up hearing about skinwalkers, nogwals, ect. I've thought of every mundane possibility. Us natives don't throw around the word skinwalker at every creepy experience. I promise. I just can't find an explanation for why I felt so bad and icky. A few months ago, me, 16, my sibling, 12, and my friends D, 16, C, 13, and L, 24, were at a hiking trail a few miles from our house. The trail is 9 miles long with heavy woods surrounding the entirety of it. When you walk about a quarter of the trail, there's a bend where you can take a seat and look at the river. There's a small bench and a book people can leave messages in. We had walked to the bend and took a quick break. By the time we got there, the sun had started to set. You could hear the bugs all around you and the wildlife in the trees and bushes. After a few minutes, we continued walking and made our way to the other side of the trail where there's a clearing. We walked down the dirt trail. On both sides there are ditches full of tall grass, nearly four feet tall. 
about 100 feet from the trail is the woods we just came out of. And on the other side there's also woods, on private property. We keep walking down the trail, and we get about 50 feet from the clearing when we all hear a man screaming from inside the woods. At first we couldn't make out what he had screamed. We just knew we all heard it. We all stopped dead in our tracks and looked at each other, trying to figure out what he screamed. Immediately after C says, what was that? We hear the man scream again. This time it was very clear. We hear the man screaming, help. Help me. Help. At this point, we have no idea who this man is, where he was, or if he was even a man. A few seconds went by and L yelled back out to the man, Hello? Do you need help? We got no response. We stare at each other in disbelief for about a minute, wondering what to do. We discuss the possibilities of what it could be, wondering if it really was a man crying out for help or if it was something else. We decided to keep walking down the trail after it was silent for a few minutes. We didn't hear any more screams or yells, but we did hear heavy footsteps in the woods, something that wasn't human. On the walk out of the trail, we took pictures of the trees and caught a pair of glowing eyes in a few pictures. We know these were not lightning bugs as they were all lower to the ground. The eyes were an orange-red color and far back, peeking between the trees near us. We took pictures every few feet, and there would be the same eyes, following along with us. When we were near the end of the trail, we heard the same male voice screaming something we couldn't understand. Nothing else happened on that trail, and we haven't gone back since. I've lost the pictures of the eyes, even though I know I saved them and put them in a folder. About a week later, I was sitting outside around 3 or 4 a.m. when I heard a scream. The same scream we heard on the trail. It was the same man screaming for help again. My friend D came outside asking if I had heard it. They were inside next to the door about to come out. The man screamed over and over again. We heard footsteps vetting closer to us, and we decided it was best to go inside and lock the doors. We didn't talk about it that night as we were too scared it would get closer. We all believe we encountered a Wendigo. There have been a lot of sightings in the Great Plains, where I live. At first we thought it could have been a skinwalker, but we never saw an animal or anything that would be specific to one. We live in a big college town. We think the Wendigo heard one of the college students' voices and made a ploy for help to lure us in. We never investigated, we never went back, we never followed its cries for help. We were all worried that it could have been a real man in real danger. The following week, we were all keeping our eyes out for news reports about someone drowning or being in some sort of accident on the trail, as it's a very popular place to hike. But there were never any reports made of anything. We all believe we encountered a Wendigo that night. I was out camping with some friends when it all happened. We were up north of New York near a place known for some famous disappearances a decade ago, which was awesome because we were all super into that stuff. Anyway, it was our third night camping out when one of our friends just went missing. Now it's important to note that Jane wasn't one to just get up and walk off. For starters, she was terrified of the dark, so she naturally stayed close to the campfire. Secondly, nobody noticed her leave. There were six of us, myself included, and we all decided to stay in pairs in case we got separated for whatever reason. Jane was supposed to stick with me since we were kind of in love with each other, but I didn't see her leave at all. We searched for her and kept hearing her call our names, but every time we got close to where we heard her, she'd call to us from deeper into the forest. What was strange was that one of us would hear her but the rest couldn't. She would speak to me trying to get me to move in one direction, but then she'd tell one of the others to walk in the complete opposite direction. It was confusing and terrifying, 
as we didn't know what was going on. Then we saw her. Jane was standing in front of us, her skin a pale gray and her eyes jet black. It wasn't Jane, but it looked like her. Whatever it was, it charged at us as soon as it spotted us, causing us all to flee. Me and three of the others managed to get away, but one of our friends, Billy, wasn't so lucky. The rangers found their bodies a week later, all torn up. It was officially ruled a bear, and some people blame us, but I know it was a skinwalker. I used to live in the Rocky Mountains as a kid with my dad. He was a bushcraft teacher who helped train people to survive in the Rocky Mountains and would often take me on camping trips. When I was eight, my dad took me on one particular camping trip that I remember strongly to this day. Now it's important to note that we used to hunt for food on the many camping trips we took together. This time was no different, and the first thing me and my dad did was begin tracking a deer. We managed to catch up with a small group of maybe five or six deer at a clearing when I heard my dad say watch the deer. But he didn't say that. Instead, my dad raised his rifle not at the group of deer but at another deer that had just entered the clearing. But it wasn't a deer. It was walking on two legs and its face looked like my dad's face but twisted and misshapen. I tried to scream but no sound came out. My dad fired three shots at the thing before dragging me away from it. We ran harder and faster than I ever remember running straight to the truck my dad drove us here in. We didn't even return to the camp we'd set up. Later, my dad did end up returning to the campsite to find someone or something had been rummaging through it. He hasn't spoken about it since, and neither of us has been to that part of the mountain since. So I was asked a few days ago to make a post about some of my experiences, and I have one of them here. Again, sorry for any bad formatting. I'm on my phone, so I'll try my best. For some context, I am a skeptic, my girlfriend is a non-believer, and the three friends that are in the story are all total believers. One night, my girlfriend and I were hanging out and we decided we wanted to go to one of the parks with a place set around us when it was dark because oh creepy stuff. Anyway, we decided to stop in at my friend's house because maybe he and his boyfriend would want to join. We drive down to their place, get out of the car, and start walking down their kind of long and very dark driveway. We didn't text before we got there. I just figured we would show up and ask because it's quite common to just drop in there unannounced, and as soon as we get halfway down the driveway, we notice this absolutely terrible smell. It smelled like something had been rotting for days, or like a compost bin during the hot summer, so it was a super bad smell, and we both noticed and commented on how bad it was. As we get closer to the house, the smell starts to go away, but it's still in the air. Normally my friends are outside, except when we go up to their shed. They aren't out there, so I figured they might be inside, so I went to knock on the door. I'm immediately a bit creeped out because they are always outside doing something at almost all hours, but whatever, it's fine. After I knock, I hear movement inside and someone saying SHH. And then just silence. I wait a few seconds and then knock again. That's when my girlfriend says, did you hear that? I thought she was talking about them inside, but she was facing the forest surrounding the house, and that's when I started getting a bit spooked. After another knock, one of my other friends, who I did not expect to be there, answered the door. He pulled me and my girlfriend in and asked me how long I had been out there and why I was here. I told him everything and that we had just gotten there, then my friend, the one who I had gone there to see, we will call him L, his boyfriend A, and the other friend will be S, pulls me aside and asks me if I smelled anything or heard anything in the woods. Again, I told him the truth and what my girlfriend heard, 
And he said, okay, you should probably leave like now. He then explains what had happened to them. They were all sitting in their shed smoking weed. Their shed is a huge tent. And then they heard something moving around them. It's totally common because they live in the woods, but when they started smelling awful rotting meat, they got a bit disturbed. They left the shed and shined their lights around, but couldn't see anything. They just heard rustling and smelled awful rot. So they sit back down when they all, very very unfazed people who don't get scared easily at all, start feeling this awful sense of terror and dread. Another huge rustle in the trees finally made them get up and sprint inside the house. A few moments later, they hear a knock on the door, and it's me. L and A also explained how weird stuff has been happening to them all week. Weird noises, strange animal sounds far off in the distance, which I now know means it is closer, and seeing some animals acting very strangely around where they live. I was still very skeptical about the whole thing and joked around saying what, is this place some kind of skinwalker ranch deal now? And everyone looks at me, because until that point, I didn't know about the name deal. Then everyone starts to feel a bit of that sense of fear. After about 10 minutes, I managed to convince them to come to the park. So me, my girlfriend, L, and S all come, while A stays home. We get to the park and nothing strange happens. We hear noises, but I see a few raccoons and chalk it up to the trash pandas having a bit of a party. I drive them home, and everything is fine. We said goodbye and we have all pretty much gotten over it and said we were just crazy. Now I drive my girlfriend home. Where we live, it's pretty much all forest, so yay for us. The drive is pretty normal. Nothing super strange until we get to this one pretty quiet street. I'm driving a bit slowly because it's a dangerous road with lots of blind corners, and at one of the houses I see what looks like a person standing up on their deck, looking at the siding of their house from inches away. WTF? My girlfriend and I both freak out as we instantly feel that awful feeling of terror and dread. My heart is racing and I speed up and get her home. I called L and told him what happened. He told me to wait and just check it out again on my way past. Okay, so I'll check it out again. The same exact position no lights on, just my headlights, and that feeling of terror. I tell him what I saw and he tells me to get out of there, so I speed home and that night I feel that sense of terror. Ever since that day, I have heard things in the woods, seen weird things, and felt that awful feeling. Sometimes I smell the scent too. I have always chalked it up to coincidence and just general weird things, but I can't help but think, what if? I was a police sergeant in some rural backwater back in 1973 when I had my first encounter. The station itself was small, as in under 10 people small so everybody took it in turns to patrol the roads. It didn't matter as the town itself only had maybe a hundred or so people, so there was rarely any trouble. Well, normally there wasn't any trouble. 1973 was the year everything went to hell. It started in February of that year when one of the local kids went missing while messing about in a small patch of forest known for its popularity with drug users. So now it was rare for kids to go missing, even with the problems we'd been having with some users who had moved just outside of town, so everybody scrambled to find the missing boy. We never found the boy. We heard him a bunch of times while searching for him, and I swear I saw glimpses of him around town for weeks following the search. If only it had been him. Then, in March, an abandoned camp was found not far from the place where the kid disappeared. It wasn't uncommon for the users to set up a camp somewhere where they wouldn't be bothered, and that was clearly what had happened here. Everyone at the station and in town naturally assumed the people who set up the campsite were somehow involved with the missing kid and had made a break for it. 
The funny thing was that they left a significant stash of shims behind. Something users would never do. But it was the best lead we had at the time. It wasn't until late May that we found the bodies of the two people not far from the campsite. There wasn't any flesh left, but it was obvious that they'd been torn apart. Bones were scattered everywhere and looked as though they'd been partially eaten. It was an obvious animal attack. And although there were both bears and wolves in the area, they tended to avoid people, making this very strange. More people started disappearing following the discovery of the bodies. The problem was, they'd often be seen after they disappeared, but they'd never interact with anyone. We never found most of them, and the few we did find had already been torn apart and eaten. We placed bounties, hired hunters, even got the National Guard in to try and look for whatever was responsible, but the attacks continued. The town is all but abandoned now. Most people fled after the National Guard failed to stop the killings. The few that remained have all gone missing. I don't know if skinwalkers were involved, but I've been told that it's a very real possibility. I wish I knew. The Giant Raven Something to consider I am unsure if this story indeed accumulates to a skinwalker story, but it is in the same vein and interesting nonetheless. In 2010, I was working for a large university while completing a graduate degree in public health. My research considered the intersectionality of cultural beliefs and their impact on allopathic medicine, modern medial care, and I was testing a hypothesis that Concerning large reservations, if public health workers weaved in tribal or native medicine into their approach to modern medicine, we would see a decrease in healthcare hesitancy for individuals that resided on reservations. Healthcare means different things to different cultures. I was exploring how to blend the two. The large university I was partnered with had a cultural anthropology program that was able to provide access to some very rural areas of reservation land in northwestern New Mexico. Thus, I buddied up with the anthropology students in order to complete my qualitative research regarding healthcare choices for individuals that resided in this part of the state. It was actually fantastic research. Public health and anthropology particularly anthropologists, share a common interest in working with people who are denied access or seek to live off the grid. While the anthropology researchers had the painstaking task of surveying how thousands of years of belief shaped current culture, I had the simple mission of working with reservation-based healthcare clinics to define how the residents of the reservation created access to services. Through the course of my research, I became friends with Professor Jones, real name redacted, and he allowed me to tag along on their research investigations. I would spend my days at rural health clinics while the anthropology grad students and postdocs spent their days in the field surveying residents and land. We would meet up at whatever motel we were staying at in the evenings to drink Miller Lite, tell stories, and engage in general university-level shenanigans while on project. We were staying in a city or large town that did not have a night life, unless you drove to the casino. Which none of us could afford on graduate assistant or postdoc salaries. One particular evening, in June, the anthropology students and Dr. Jones shared a story of a gigantic raven that plagued the research team throughout the day, they said it even followed their van. They said the enormous bird would screech and run at the researchers and they all recalled the bird being very aggressive and somewhat scary. They all had pictures of the bird on their phones, which I did see. Now, there was nothing of scale to compare the bird to, it was either on a dirt road or in flight, but no less than six researchers recalled stories of the enormity of the bird and how it followed the van. We laughed about it, and the anthropology team made jokes about the bird being a new mascot for their research. It was also not hard to fathom that a raven, living somewhere with little human intervention, might grow to huge proportions. After our parking lot revelry, we headed to our rooms, I shared a room with Dr. Jones. 
During the night, Dr. Jones became quite ill. He was pale, sweaty, and said he felt terrible. He could not describe exactly how he was feeling, just that he felt off and was unable to sleep. The next morning, Dr. Jones's condition had deteriorated so much so that he asked me to take him to Albuquerque to be seen at the ER, which was about a two-hour drive. In fact, he felt so bad that he had his graduate student pack his bags for him while I drove him back to civilization at about 5 a.m. I drove him to the Regional Academic Medical Center, and after a battery of tests, the medical team could find nothing wrong. A few weeks later, I was back on the reservation, and again performing my research at local health clinics. I bumped into a local spiritual healer that would frequent the clinics, and he asked me about Dr. Jones. I told him about how he had felt ill and had been unable to return to the research site. I will never forget. This spiritual healer looked at me and said, he is in grave danger, which made my blood run cold, and he immediately got in contact with Dr. Jones. I thought the remark was startling, but went about my research. A few days later, I met Dr. Jones and his wife for dinner in Albuquerque. He told me that the spiritual healer came to perform a healing ceremony on him and said he had been in the proximity of a shapeshifter that had cursed him. He said that after the ceremony he was well and that the events that unfolded changed his perception of spiritual health and the healers that live on the reservation. Now, I am an empiricist, so I think there are lots of variables at play here. But what I do know is that the anthropology research team did see something odd, a gigantic raven, of which the pictures they deleted at the advice of the healer that came to see Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones was visibly ill and was, subsequently, visibly well after his visit with the healer. In fact, Dr. Jones tells this story to his new graduate students to this day to illustrate the necessity of observing local customs and the impact of local belief systems. Dr. Jones and I still keep in touch. He now works for a different university system, but when he comes to town we still get beer and tacos and reminisce about our research endeavors in New Mexico. I am not sure if he encountered a skinwalker, but he is totally convinced he was affected by a form of old magic while working in NM. I do not have a theory as to his illness or the encounter with the large bird, but I do, now, work with local elders while on reservation land to gain consent before conducting research or setting up a public health initiative. It was very strange. And I think about this event often. Maybe foxes, maybe skinwalkers. So I was gaming with my mates and we were talking about all kinds of cryptids and I mentioned skinwalkers. My friends explained why I shouldn't have mentioned their name, and later that night, I heard human-like screaming coming from the woodland outside the back of my house. For the past week, from midnight to two in the morning, all I've heard is screaming. Despite the fact that it is fox mating season, I can tell the difference. My younger brothers are terrified of it, and I don't want to tell them what I could be until I have some sort of confirmation. Any help anyone can give me would be greatly appreciated. This happened a long time ago, so my memories aren't exactly clear, especially considering the events that took place. I was up in the Lake District in Canada camping and hiking with my brother and his girlfriend when it all happened. It was a trip they bought me on after my boyfriend of eight years passed away in a car crash, and they thought it might help me move on. Anyway, on the fourth day of our camping trip, we had set up camp at a large stream. All things told, it was a pretty good area to set up camp. Nothing strange happened at all during the day so we never had a reason to suspect anything would happen. It was quiet all day, but then the night came and the strange things started to happen. We were around the campfire having a few drinks when the sounds started to come out of the forest. They sounded like someone was screeching, 
but it also sounded unnatural, twisted even. My brother just laughed it off, claiming it was just the drinks making us think the sounds were something else, something which both me and his girlfriend were very quick to agree with. A few hours later, we had retreated to the comfort of our tent. The others were sleeping, but I couldn't get those sounds out of my mind. Around 2 a.m. in the morning, I started to hear whispering coming from outside the tent. I just thought being tired and drunk was playing tricks on my mind. But the whispering just grew louder and louder, until I could swear that I recognized the voice. It sounded like my dead girlfriend, which was impossible. The voice kept insisting I come outside, and in my then current state, I must have decided to leave the safety of the tent. I say must have because I don't actually remember leaving the tent. I don't remember anything about the night, but my brother and his girlfriend found me the following morning unconscious. I still don't know what happened, but whenever I bring it up, people ask if a skinwalker may have been involved. Most of the time, they're joking, but it does make me wonder if that was what really happened. I don't know if skinwalkers exist, but I may have a story to share. I live in a small town in Colorado, and there is this really famous abandoned house on the edge of town. It is famous because not even the druggies that like to shoot up in the various abandoned properties around town go to that particular house. Last November, a pair of young kids went into that house, and one of them ended up getting brutally murdered and eaten. The other kid managed to get away and got the police involved. The kid was supposedly murdered by his own mother, despite her working in a hospital on the other side of town when he was killed. The kid that survived was absolutely certain that it was the kid's mother that was the killer. Is this a skinwalker? I really don't know. Hey, I'm a Muslim and I've researched a copious amount about Jinn, our equally conscious neighbor on this earth. After doing some research on skinwalkers, I'm fairly certain they're Jinn who have been granted the ability to take physical form easily in the SW regions through ritual. Before calling me out, please fully hear me out, as I'd honestly love feedback on this hypothesis. Jinn are beings composed of an energy body, which is in duality to our human bodies composed of matter. The key thing to know is that the Jinn's most famous ability is shapeshifting, especially into dogs and humans. The Jinn's other abilities include instant transportation of objects by converting matter to energy, transporting them at near light speed, and converting them back into matter. This is how Solomon apparently used the Jinn's to build magnificent structures. Jinn are also able to possess human beings, animals, and inanimate objects. Muslims do not believe in the ghosts of human beings. We believe all these to be malicious jinn pretending to be dozens of identities over the millennia. Shapeshifters, ghosts, demons, fallen angels, spirits, etc. We believe Lucifer is a jinn, since fallen angels are impossible as angels are incorruptible. However, please do note that just as humans, all jinn are not bad. Many are benevolent, think spirit guides, while most are probably neutral and don't interact with us. The interesting part, coming back to skinwalkers, is that not all jinn can do all abilities. Only the strongest jinn can perform acts such as shapeshifting into humans or transportation of large objects over large distances. This is similar to how only a handful of humans out of 7 billion probably have real psychic abilities, or even how working out makes you stronger. I don't know if these abilities are innate or if every jinn can attain them through training. For example, only one jinn in Solomon's army was able to steal the giant throne, think Game of Thrones, from the queen of another kingdom without them being able to react. The jinn brought it to Solomon from another country before Solomon finished standing up. 
Another example of skill levels is how shapeshifting into a human is much more advanced than into an animal, or possessing a human is more advanced than an object. When I recently read that the Native American medicine men performed rituals to ask the skinwalkers to fight the colonizers, it immediately reminded me of how the only way for humans to interact with jinn is through both symbols and rituals. Magical books, such as the Key of Solomon, show us how to interact with jinn. Many methods and forms were discovered by many civilizations as their magical arts over the ages. My hypothesis is that the medicine men of the Oz UT area performed some ritual on the land that allowed jinn to shapeshift much more easily. Weaker jinn can use this area to shapeshift, which is why we see way more reports in those areas, yet you still see a few shapeshifter reports in other areas. Normally, weak jinn pretend to be ghosts or demons haunting a place, as they can stick to imitations of sounds and movement of small objects over small distances to drive fear. The fact that many animal-like skinwalkers walk funny while the human-like skinwalkers walk almost normal makes me think of different skill levels of jinn. Literally, all of their abilities match up, shape-shifting into both animals and humans, different levels of skill at shape-shifting, using ghost-like techniques, calling out to you in voices you recognize, and finally, medicine men calling them forth with rituals. These are just my thoughts as I've been trying to piece together the experiences and stories of different cultures and civilizations to hopefully see the bigger picture of our world. I'd love to get any and all feedback to help refine or refute this hypothesis. I'd also love to hear what other creatures you think might be Jin. Edit. After some feedback, I'd like to clarify how jinn and Abrahamic demons are the same exact thing since Islam is an Abrahamic religion referring to the same entities. Jinn are literally the same thing as Abrahamic demons. The main difference is that Muslims believe jinn slash demons are their own third race of conscious beings, alongside humans and angels. Muslims do not believe demons are fallen angels. Instead, that jinn slash demons were their own race of conscious beings where the best of them were allowed to be among the angels in rank, before many were cast down after jealousy towards Adam, with them being led by Lucifer, God's most precious jinn. From the moment of being cast from heaven, the Christian and Islamic stories of demons are the same. So a few years ago, me and my mom were driving home at like 3 a.m. We turned onto my street and I was looking out the window when I saw the back of this super tall, lanky, whitish gray hairless figure walking in between two houses and about to go behind them. I still remember seeing its spine because it was hunched over and so skinny. I was really freaked out, but I figured I may have been seeing things since it was so late. I stayed quiet and my mom kept driving. A second passed and my mom turned to me and said, what the F was that? My heart instantly dropped to my stomach. She saw it too. She said that when we turned onto the block, her high beams hit it. Its eyes glared like an animal. So when the light hit it, it had big sharpish teeth and grimaced like it was angry at us, then turned and walked away. She described the same body as me and the same manner of walking and that it turned from us and walked back behind the houses. We were so terrified we literally didn't know what we saw. She also said that when she was driving to get me she saw a bunch of deer on the way to the bus stop, but on her way back when we saw the thing she saw no deer whatsoever. I live in a pretty suburban part of New Jersey, but I do have woods around me. My mom and I are still terrified by it. And I've never seen my mom scared of something like that, especially since she's seen its face. Does anyone have any idea what I saw? My husband and I were driving to see my brother for Christmas a few years back. We lived in regional Victoria, Australia and he lived in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. 
It was about 2 a.m. and pitch black. Once we were reasonably close, five hours away, we had to go up and over this mountain slash forest area in the middle of nowhere to get there. It was rainy, misty and freezing cold, which was weird because it was the middle of summer and anyone who lives in Australia knows how hot it gets in summer here. But I figured, if rainforests are usually wet and cold, anyway, we were rounding this really narrow corner and out of nowhere, up beside me was this thing. It looked like it was trying to cross the road, and it stopped and ran back into the woods when we almost hit it. My husband thinks it was a giant koala, he doesn't believe in the paranormal or anything weird, but he didn't get a good look at it like I did. It was right next to me on the passenger side door. To me, it looked like a skinny, lanky person on all fours covered in fur. It had the face of a person and the body of a person but was walking on its knuckles and legs. Its eyes glowed like a cat's eyes in the dark as our headlights hit it. It freaked me out, and to this day I still don't know what the hell it was that I saw, but it's burned into my memory. Was it a giant mutant koala? A skinwalker? Yowie? Sasquatch? What do you guys think? Every night, my husband has terrifying dreams about mocking a skinwalker and getting attacked. This last one was the worst. He woke up and had thrown everything off the bed. In the dream, he looked at it head on and said I love you. He doesn't know why he said that. He usually has control over what happens in his dreams, but with these ones he doesn't. He was also standing on the edge of the woods a few weeks ago when I was explaining them to him and he said it out loud. Since then, he's been having these dreams and we've been hearing awful screaming from the woods every night. Any advice on how to make it stop or what it means? My friend and I go fishing pretty often on the river that runs through our small town in the Central Valley of California. This particular spot is relatively close to a few of the more expensive houses in town. It's near the edge of town, so on one side is the access road and houses, and on the other is miles and miles of orange orchards. From a dirt parking lot, the walk is just through an orchard and along a few river washes down to the shoreline where we like to fish in the summer. We had been fishing since about 5. 40 PM at this spot today with nothing out of the ordinary happening until my friend left for a few minutes. He retraced our path to retrieve some gear he'd left upstream that he didn't think he'd need. It was late dusk or early night by this time, maybe 9 PM, and flashlights were necessary to see more than 10 feet in front of you. He was gone for 15 minutes while I waited upstream in the shallow water with my light and net trying to catch some crayfish to eat. As soon as he came back, he called out, where are you? With a noticeable concern in his voice. I called back from around a bit of a curve in the river that I was in the water. I figured he just didn't see me and was worried about me drowning or something. He then revealed to me that as he was packing up the stuff he'd left, he was barked at by an animal. He shone his light in the direction of the noise to see a fox with orange eyes looking back at him. He noted that its body was slender and oddly shaped, but that could just be because it was starved or rabid. Which also may explain why, as he yelled and kicked dirt in its direction, it just slowly walked toward him, unfazed. He was backing up toward where I was for a few yards while the fox followed him. For whatever reason, he was so unnerved by the behavior of the fox that he said he began screaming out for me and running away from the fox. So that part of the night was a little bit weird, but I figured it was just a rabid fox or one defending its kits. In hindsight, it could only really have been a rabid one since they don't have babies young enough to defend until the spring. Regardless, I was not too worried about it because I've spent enough time in the woods and at the river to know animals will do weird things that don't make sense to us. After he came back and explained what happened, 
We just messed around trying to net crayfish and carp in the river with our flashlights and checked my minnow trap and whatnot. Pretty suddenly, I got an unexplainable feeling of unease. It wasn't intense enough for me to say anything, and I just chalked it up to being anxiety or an animal or someone else nearby. I didn't waste any time getting out of the water, though, and I started packing up my stuff on the beach. As I was packing up, my friend kept looking up at the dry river wash back the way we came. The second time he heard it, he was fumbling for his knife, and I heard it too for the first time. It sounded like something at least as big as me, snapping branches under its feet as it moved. It sounded like it was just on the other side of the small island separating where the river is running now and where it splits off and runs when it's full. About 30 yards away. This usually isn't such a big deal as we hear raccoons and possums all the time down there, and there's always the possibility of it being one of the many homeless people living there. But for whatever reason, we were both feeling uneasy about what was going on without really understanding why. Then our fear was justified by an absolutely evil series of screams. The only accurate way I can describe it is as evil. It was relatively high-pitched, but it was also guttural, like you could hear fluid in its throat. It was breathy and sounded dead and monotone. Like, if my vocal cords were completely torn up and I tried to clear my throat while also screaming, it might sound like what this thing sounded like. A wheezy, throaty, mid to high-pitched yell or scream. It started with maybe two or three two seconds long screams, then progressed into longer screams, and peaked at what seemed like a 5 to 10 seconds long scream. Then it trailed back off into the shorter screams and stopped about 20 to 30 seconds after it started. I can't remember what my friend and I were doing while it was happening. I don't remember if we looked at each other or not, but I was definitely frozen as my brain scrambled to fit what was happening into a slot of past experience. But this sounded like no animal I've ever heard of. I know what the owls sound like, I know what the fox screams sound like, I know what nearly every animal in my area sounds like. This thing didn't even really sound like an animal. It sounded dead. And evil. My heart sank deeper into my chest the longer it went on, and I could vividly hear the fluid in its throat and the distinct why as it opened its mouth and yelled at us. And that's what it felt like. It felt like it was staying just out of our sight, yelling directly at us. My friend quickly packed up his stuff and we had to walk toward where the sound came from to get out. I wasn't feeling scared like my heart was pounding. Instead I felt this sinking feeling, almost like I had to puke. We swiftly walked back, scanning every tree and bush on either side of us with our lights, occasionally turning back to check behind us. It didn't feel real. It felt like I had entered a horror movie scene where I was about to die. Or a nightmare where I suddenly become lucid and realize something is after me. I've had my fair share of odd things happening to me in the woods. Multiple trees falling with no wind, strange whistles, lights in the sky, rocks thrown toward me, etc. But nothing made my stomach sink like that scream did. We eventually made it up to the orchard, and as we were trying to wrap our brains around what we had just heard, we heard it again a bit further to our right. But it wasn't screaming. It was snarling and almost vocalizing or growling or something. It lasted no longer than four seconds, and we walked the final 20 feet to the car and left. That's what happened. My question is, does this sound like a skinwalker encounter? The fox was bizarre, but the yell and snarl were so blatant and evil in such a primal way that I can't stop hearing it in my head. If there are any good resources to learn about these things or what an encounter with them means, I'd greatly appreciate it if someone shared them with me. It seems hard to find information about this subject, and I can't handle not knowing what that was. I'm nearly 16 years old. But this takes me back a couple years. I'd say around the age of 12 or 13. 
I'm not sure. My two cousins and I had been playing in this section in our grandma's woods, about 700 feet, forward from the tree line where my grandma's house is. We had played back there all day and had a lot of fun with no problems. Then, at around 11 p.m., we had been out of the woods for a little bit at this point, but I didn't know where my shirt was. I hear my cousin say, I think we left that and some of our other stuff back there. Come on, let's go grab it, and I follow being the stupid child that I was, and I get back to this little clearing where we were, and I don't see my cousin, my shirt, or any of our things, and I don't hear any more footsteps, just a really weird feeling in my throat, feet, and stomach like some force was just keeping me there. Then I finally made it back to my grandmother's house, went inside, and there my cousin was just sitting inside. I never found that shirt and still have no idea what that was. I was following that day. Are they in Washington state? Okay, so I live on the east coast of Washington. Recently, I went on a drive I take a lot. It follows the Spokane River for a ways. I decided, since I had taken this drive so many times and I loved how scenic it was, it would be okay if I did it alone, I always took a friend because there isn't any service for miles once you're out there enough, I went further than usual driving about 50 miles out, taking pictures and stuff like that, because I bought a camera years ago and just never used it. I didn't even end up taking any good pictures, but it was still cool to go further than I had before, although I will never take this drive again. It does follow the river, but there's also some pretty thick woods in the area too. I don't know about other places around Washington or the Northwest. But we have painted rocks, old Indian paintings that have been preserved on their original rocks with a gate to keep people from messing with them. Up until that day, I thought we only had the one, but on that drive I saw another one, although the gate was definitely too short and anyone could jump it to get to the paintings. As I was driving back, it had started to get dark. I was a good 30 miles away from town when I saw what I thought was a coyote. Now that I grew up in a hunting family, I've seen more coyotes than I could count. But I remember being pretty excited because I hadn't seen one in years. It was just off the side of the road behind the wall that'll keep your car from going off the road. But as I got closer, it stood up on its hind legs. That thing definitely wasn't a coyote. I know what a coyote looks like and they are definitely not taller than a person on their hind legs. By the time I passed it, it had ducked behind the wall, and I was in full panic mode. I was still a good ways away from town, by myself with no service. I ended up almost flipping my car going around some sharp turns because I was going close to 80 in a 35 zone. I honestly just wanted to get back into town but every now and then I'd see it out of the corner of my eye in the trees. Now I am fully aware of the fact that it was dark and I was terrified, so all of those times could have been my mind playing tricks on me. But the first time I saw it, right by the road, I knew what I saw. That wasn't my mind playing tricks on me. But I also don't know much about the legends about the Spokane tribes or if we have skinwalkers up here but I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, what really freaked me out, I think, were the eyes. Again, hunting family, I remember growing up, my dad always telling me to look out at the trees while driving at night, and if I saw two glowing things, it meant there was an animal. I had spotted plenty of deer and raccoons that way as a kid. But whatever that thing was, its eyes didn't glow. I didn't get a good look at its eyes. Again, I was more focused on getting the hell out of there rather than looking at what eyes it had. But human eyes don't glow. I honestly think that's what bothers me the most. So if anyone can give me information, or if it wasn't a skinwalker, if anyone knows what it could have been, please let me know.
Skinwalker slash Kushtika in Alaska I'm not sure exactly if it was a Kushtika or not, but I'm pretty positive that it was a skinwalker. My husband and I were up in Alaska with his side of the family in an Airbnb in Wasilla, right next to a lake. For the most part, we stayed there uneventfully, but there are still a few things that happen that we still can't explain. The first night, I'm not sure what my husband was thinking but he decided to whistle at night. He regretted doing it the rest of the week and didn't do it again. Almost immediately after, we heard a baby cry. Keep in mind that we don't have any kids staying with us. We thought maybe it was the TV, but nothing was on and we were all alone. Everyone else was either asleep or out of the house. Then, I kid you not, all the motion detection lights flipped on and the cries stopped. At this point, we're a little freaked out but still in denial. Unfortunately, it kept happening throughout the week we were there. Eventually, even all my in-laws heard it. Then, on the second to last day, my husband and I woke up around 2 am and heard a huge bang against the window above our beds. It could have been a wild animal, but still we got the message. I don't think my husband is ever going to whistle at night again after this. When I was younger, I lived off the grid in these hills for a few years. We basically only left to get groceries every once in a while and so my parents could go to work. One night, on a bright moon, not full, I was sitting outside of our cabin and was bored waiting for my mom to get home. I see this pale looking deer walking up on a ridge about 300 yards away. It is walking perpendicular to me and is going from right to left. The moonlight was gleaning off of the deer, but for some reason it seemed to almost glow, or be whiter than normal. After watching this deer for a couple of minutes kind of muddle along every once in a while, dipping its head down, it began to stagger forward but its four legs began to shift upwards in front of its body and the deer itself appeared to get taller, taller than any person I've seen, at least eight feet tall. The front legs shifted to their sides and became what I can only assume were arms. The deer's head began to shift and become more upright in its stance. It stood there for about five, minus 10 seconds, just on its hind legs, balanced and still like a giant pale horn clad warrior or something? Then that was it. I lost sight completely and have never seen anything like it again since. One of the people we were living with was a 50 year old Vietnam vet who saw the entire event with me. He stayed up for a few hours beating pots and pans to scare it away, no guns. Whenever I share this story when my friends ask about paranormal or unexplainable stuff, I always give this story because I truly could not comprehend what it was, and most people tell me I saw a skinwalker, but I'm not sure so sure. What do you think? I'm 17 years old, I know what you're thinking. It's just this kid's imagination. Just let me tell this story and you can decide if you think it's real or not. It was mid-December to late December 2020 in central Pennsylvania. I honestly didn't think we had any skinwalkers here until now. Here's the story. I was at my family cabin hunting like most Pennsylvania do in December. I was going to be there for two weeks with my dad, brother and grandfather. We arrived the first day at 4. 45 p.m. So we still had some hunting light left. We grabbed our rifles and headed out. We got some light snow in the morning so we could see the tracks easier but enough to get stuck or lost. We walked for roughly five minutes. When we finally came across some tracks there were two sets and some scat. We could tell by the size of the scat one was a buck. My brother and dad went after one set of tracks and me the other. I followed the tracks always till the brush was getting too thick for me to see past 30 yards so I decided to sit up against a tree with my rifle. 
About 15 minutes later I was eating a snack bar and drinking water when it sounded like I went deaf. No noise the whole wood sounded quiet when I heard a loud church and pop of sticks and leaves. Sounded way too heavy to be a deer but couldn't have been a bear since we didn't see many in the winter. The one way I knew something was right was the awful smell of meat that sat in the sun for two weeks. Five minutes later everything was still very quiet when I suddenly got this feeling of being watched. Now I don't get scared easily but I got up, packed all my stuff up, grabbed my gun and walked slowly looking behind me every few yards. When I finally got back to camp it was five roughly and it was dark. I saw my brother, dad and grandfather sitting around the campfire eating hot dogs and beans. I pulled up a chair and gotten a hot dog and started to eat it when my dad asked did you see anything? I sat and thought for a minute no nothing but snow and birds. Thinking it was a good idea to hide what I smelt and heard. Later that night when I laid down I thought about it some more and texted a family friend. He was 49 maybe 50 the smartest outdoorsman I knew I texted him hey. So I had a weird experience in the woods today. He texted back what happened son? I said this terrible smell like I've never smelled before and these really big footsteps way bigger than a deer. He said smell? What kind of smell? I said like someone left meat out in the sun for days. He texted oh I was worried you would say that. Let me tell you a story. So I was 27 in 1999 and I was hunting deep in the backwoods I was sitting there for some time when this smell overcame me dot it smelled like rotting flesh and everything went silent. I couldn't see anything but about 15 minutes later I heard some say my name and say come here. The only part was it was my mom's voice clear as day. The thing is she died two years ago. I ran and never looked back and never hunted there again. I dropped my phone from pure shock I pulled my blankets up and went to be. I didn't want to move. I had a terrible nightmare of a deer that wasn't really a deer chasing me and I feel and right before he attacked me I woke up sweating and screaming. Day 2. We went out for our second day of hunting and I walked to a tree stand we put up that summer. I got in. And about an hour or so later everything went silent and I heard the walking again and the smell was back. The only difference this time is I could see it. Raggy skin almost like it didn't fit. No tail skin on the face was dropping way down below where it should be. I pulled up my gun shaking like never before, looked down the scope and shot it twice. It ran so fast into the bushes while screaming and crying like crazy. Five minutes later my dad radioed me asking if I got one I said well I shot something that looked like a deer. I don't know what it was please just get here as I dropped my radio to the ground. My brother dad and grandfather all came with their guns 15 minutes later. I was still in the tree stand shaking they had to help me down from it. They asked me what I shot and I said I think it was a doe but it was different. I told them what it was they didn't believe me which I don't blame them. It was crazy to think I barely believed myself. And the scariest patriot of it all happened. We all heard our mom's voices say our name and say where are you. Yeah that's right we all heard our own mom say the same thing my grandfather heard this. My dad his and my brother and I ours. We all looked at each other and got out of there and then we heard a baby crying. We felt bad but had to go we knew it wasn't real. We got to the cabin and while we were packing we heard a thud. I opened the door with rifle in hand and saw two dead rabbits on the porch with their stomachs ripped out. We got out of there ran to the truck rifle still in hand. We got in and drove fast as we could that was the longest ride ever. We sold the property since none of us would go back. The new owners have had it for roughly a year and now just started having problems. Should we tell them what happened to us? Not sure if this is real but I heard it before. 
There was once a man who had problems with a skinwalker. It would howl outside his window, he would hear scratching at night, and he was getting fed up. He had a big Great Dane dog. This thing was a beast. It took a lot to get his dog riled up, and a lot more to scare it. One night, his dog was on edge. It would run up to the window, closed, and bark into the darkness. The man would watch but see nothing. One day, he decides to go outside and grabs his shotgun, a flashlight, and opens the door. Shining the light, he sees it. It's crouched and stares at him. It had a large, fanged mouth. It has sunken pits in its head and no eyes. Rather, the pits are deep black. They seem to stare right into him. It stared at him, and let out a blood-curdling scream. It ran off. The next night, he heard his dog yelp and scream. He ran downstairs to find its corpse. Its guts were ripped out. Its head was shoved into the cavity. Its eyes were torn out and its blood spelled out the words you're next. He was terrified. After burying his dog, the situation got worse. He would even see the skinwalker during the day. It kept getting bolder and bolder. One night, he was lying in his bed with his shotgun, and heard the usual tap on the window. He didn't look at it. He was under the blanket. It got louder. And louder. Eventually, the thing was banging full force on the window. He was terrified, and gripped his gun. His blood ran cold as he heard the window shatter, accompanied by a terrifying scream. The thing grabbed him and bit hard. The next day, his girlfriend came to visit. She found him nowhere. Then, she noticed something on the ground. It was red, and wet. It was a small chunk of his brain. She didn't know it was his, though. She was disgusted. But then, she saw another chunk. And another. They seemed to form a trail. They led to a hollow log. She looked inside, and screamed. Her boyfriend's gutted, dead, mutilated body was shoved messily inside of it. She heard a twig snap. Turning, there was the skinwalker. It smiled a horrible, fanged smile. Then, it sliced her throat. This happened not long ago, so it's still pretty fresh in my mind. Due to the pandemic, I decided to hunt for my meat rather than go to somewhere like Walmart for obvious reasons. If nothing else, I at least know where my meat came from. Anyway, a few weeks ago I was tracking some deer along a large stream when I began smelling a foul odor in the air. At first I ignored it and moved on. It wasn't exactly rare to accidentally come across a dead animal. But it started to become an issue after I began tracking a small group of four deer. Now, I've been around coyotes, wolves and bears. They don't always smell the best and sometimes they smell real bad. I started to panic because I was concerned I was being stalked by a predator, which almost never ends well, and I was considering turning back and getting out of there when I came face to face with it. I don't what it was but it was tall and was a sickly gray. It looked like a deer, but it was standing on its hind legs and its head was as much human as it was deer. It had blood dripping from its mouth and it looked as though it was trying to talk to or at me, but no sound ever came out. The most disturbing thing however was that was carrying a dead coyote in its arms. I just stood there terrified as it finally spoke to me. You shouldn't be here, it said to me, before running off into the forest. It's been three weeks and I haven't been back there since.
I saw a skinwalker once. It was a long time ago now though I remember it as clearly as if it has just happened. I was a pizza boy back when I was still in college so I could earn some money when I had to take a delivery out to an old farmhouse. The farmhouse was well known as they ordered pizza almost every night. Two large pepperoni pizzas and a bottle of coke was their usual order. I remember because I was one of only two delivery drivers who were willing to go out that far. My last night as a delivery driver, we got the normal call from them. So I grabbed their order and drove out to the farmhouse. Normally, I'd walk up to the front door and give them their order. But this time I pulled up to see the husband standing out front, waiting for me. This wasn't normal, especially since it was raining heavily that night. I pulled up and rolled down my window. Before I could speak up however, he grabbed me and attempted to pull me out of the car. It's at that point I noticed that mouth, the teeth and the eyes. I only got a brief glimpse but it was enough to scar me for life. I managed to break free from him and pull away, but he managed to run alongside my car as I started going faster. Eventually he stopped trying to chase me as I sped up past the speed limit. Later it turned out the couple at the farmhouse were brutally murdered two days before I made the delivery. I later asked my granddad, who's familiar with the Navajo, and he told me it was most likely a skinwalker before laughing. Thinking back, his laugh was a more nervous laugh than one intended as a joke. I don't know if that was skinwalker, but I'm lucky to be alive. This is a more personal story for me, the writer of the blog. It actually just happened an hour ago, as of writing, when I was walking my dog. Near to where I live is an old abandoned railway that people use as a dog trail. It's fairly woody and passes by a meadow with two small ponds. Because of the heavy rains we've had over the last few weeks and it being winter, Seagulls from the coast have decided to holiday in my small landlocked town. This is normal and happens every year, so nobody really cares. I don't really care myself as why would I need to and I normally ignore them. Until this morning when one started meowing right in my face. Like a cat would. Now while many of the stories I share with you all come from the US where skinwalkers are known to exist, I live in the UK where we never get this sort of thing. We don't even get lycanthropes, real or mental illness, anymore, not that it would mean anything. Now, I'm fairly knowledgeable on skinwalkers but I've never heard of one that's made the cross between the continents before. Do any of you have the answers I need? Could they even take the form of a small bird? I'm weirded out by the whole thing. A friend of mine had an encounter with a skinwalker. She was eight when it happened, but she still remembers it now as if it happened yesterday. She won't tell me the whole story, but judging by how scared she gets when she tells me what she can, I have no reason to not believe her. The way she tells it, one night she was about to go to bed when her father told my friend and her mother to hide in the basement. My friend was confused but apparently her mother knew what was going on. Now, the basement the house had a window, but it had been broken for some time and so my friend could hear everything going on outside. She would periodically hear her father yell skinwalker. Or there it is. Before eventually falling asleep. She told me this happened several nights in a row before it stopped. To this day she rarely talks about it and her father refuses to when asked. For the last few weeks, my dogs have been barking at something that only comes out at night. I know what it is, but I don't want to say its name. 
I don't want to give it power over me. I don't want to bring it on. It started just after Halloween. At first I thought it was just a bunch of kids pranking me, or maybe someone was making a cruel joke at my expense. As a Native American, a lot of people have a warped view on my beliefs. When I moved into my current home a year ago, a lot of people were distrustful of me. I don't know why though I later found out the area is deeply conservative and most likely that's why. Anyway, after the first week of my dogs barking at someone, I began noticing an odd smell whenever my dogs started barking. I can't really describe it other than the foulness of the smell. It was like a rotting corpse. Two weeks ago, things got worse. I caught it trying to open the back door to my house and I immediately began praying, causing it to flee. That's when I realized what had been stalking my home and me. A medicine man from my tribe is already on his way, but I'm scared. I don't know what will happen. My brother was killed by a skinwalker. It happened when I was younger, maybe six or seven years ago. We were out hunting in West Virginia when it all happened. It was early in the morning and we were following a deer trail when my brother told me that he thought someone was following us. I turned but didn't see anyone but he said they were in the bush. My mistake was laughing it off. His was following me. Not 10 minutes after he mentioned us being followed, we came across our first deer. It hadn't spotted us and we were downwind so I thought it was a good idea to get some target practice in. I almost took the shot when I realized my brother hadn't said anything about the deer. Normally, I wouldn't be able to get him to shut up, so this was weird. I turned and couldn't see him. I started to panic. Forgetting about the deer, I turned and ran down to the trail. What I found was horrifying. My brother was on the ground, covered in blood. Standing over him was this thing. It, it looked like a deer standing on its hind legs, but its fur was matted and the skin was rotting. The worst was its jaws were dripping with blood. I stood there frozen as the thing, the skinwalker, noticed me. It didn't try to come after me, instead it simply smiled and dragged my brother into the bush. We never found his body, but I ended up getting arrested for his murder. I'm sharing this story from a prison cell, hoping somebody believes me. If you do, don't go into the Appalachian Mountains. I work as a farmhand not far from a nearby Native American reserve. It's hard work, but honest and I wouldn't have it any other way. The only problem I have is the occasional weird thing that usually ends with a blessing from the medicine men from the nearby reserve. The last time this happened was just a few months ago. Despite the whole pandemic going on, the farm still need to work due to the need for food. Anyway. The farm where I work is surrounded by a bunch of other farms, some independent, some owned by the big agriculture companies and some owned by the reserve. That means a lot of people work in the area despite it being mostly farmland, but it also meant that there was a few months earlier this year where people would disappear. No one knew what happened to those who disappeared or even how it happened, but it didn't take long for rumors to begin spreading around. I had some of my friends and fellow farmhands come up to me and say they saw some disfigured coyote run through the corn fields in the days leading up to a disappearance, or some of the cattle herders finding mutilated cows in a tree. I never saw anything personally, but the disappearances ended after a group of medicine men from the reserve came and blessed all the farms. Now. I've only just found out about skinwalkers and while this does seem to fit in with what happened, I can't really be sure. Maybe it was a skinwalker, maybe it was something else.
I once came face to face with a skinwalker and survived. This happened several years ago, but it's burnt into my mind like nothing else. I work at a lumber company where my job is to scout out parts of forest suitable for harvesting. It's hard work as I need to fill a quota given to me by the company and keep to standards set by the EPA and it often means I spend days out in the wilderness looking for good lumber spots. Well, it was one of these extended camping trips where I had my encounter. I was four days in and I had already found several good spots for the company, but wanted to get a few more in before I left. I spent the first half of the day surveying the area being careful to note my path so I didn't get lost, when it happened. Babe. I heard it as clear as day. It was my wife. I mean, it had to be it was her voice. Babe, I need your help, she said again. I didn't understand what was going on. She kept calling out to me, calling out for help but it was coming from all around me and it sounded like she was getting closer. I stood there paralyzed, unable to think and unable to really do anything. I quickly spotted something moving in the bushes in front of me. It was a deer, but it was different somehow. I couldn't focus at first but then I realized what I was looking at. It wasn't a deer. I mean, it looked like a deer but it was standing on its back legs, had no fur and was a sickly gray color. Babe. Why won't you help me, it said. It was speaking to me, but it sounded like my wife. It stepped out of the bushes into the clearing in front of me and I ran. I didn't even think, I just ran. I kept running, even as it stopped chasing me. I had never ran so fast before. It was morning when I finally reached my truck. Tired and afraid, I managed to return to the lumber office. I couldn't tell them what I saw, none of them would believe me. I simply gave them my list of sites for harvesting. I wish I hadn't, since several of the lumberjacks have disappeared since the company started harvesting the trees in the area. Before I begin, I would like to say that this is a very long story. It's been something that's haunted me since I was six years old, since my first encounter with it. I have had dreams about this, and two very specific encounters with the creature. I'm sharing this story so I could possibly find help on what to do or how to get rid of this creature that's been hunting me since I can remember. Just for background, I am a 21 year old female and still worry about this creature finding me, but I'll get into detail why later. For now, here's my story. I would always go camping with my grandparents, who I call my Gammy and Gampy, at the end of my school years. I would always look forward to it since I grew up loving the outdoors and the woods. I especially loved camping, loving the idea of having s'mores, taking long hikes, being around the campfire, and of course the wildlife we would see. Now I grew up in California, mostly near cities, so the forest was like my true home to me. I always preferred being near trees and dirt rather than buildings and crowded places. Besides, the woods were much quieter and more peaceful. I always felt safe when I was there, like nothing could ever hurt me. But something strange would always happen at the end of the month of May. I would have this reoccurring dream during the last week of my school year. I would be in the woods, walking alone down a dirt trail, the woods were always strangely quiet. I would continue to walk this path until I saw this red fox poke its head from behind a tree. Its eyes were always strangely human-like, but they were yellow and somehow looked like teddy bear eyes and it would just stare at me. It wouldn't make a sound at all. It would just watch me. Usually in my dream I would go up and pet it, that making the fox finally make a noise, usually a soft growl. Then I would continue walking, and it would follow me. The first time I would have this dream was when I was actually around 5 years old, and it lasted until I was about perhaps 11. 
Over the years it would be the same exact thing. I would walk in the woods, find this fox, pet it, then continue my hike with it alongside me. But about having this dream for the fourth time, it would start to walk behind me. That's when I started to feel uneasy about this fox. I could hear it making odd noises, but every time I went back to look, it was just walking like nothing was wrong, even, somehow, giving me a smile. Sorry to go on about a dream but, I now believe that it was a warning of the creature. Now that the dream is out of the way, I can talk about my first true encounter. I was six years old and was going on a camping trip with my Gammy and Gampy for about a week. Of course, I was very excited for it, being able to barely keep myself in my school seat for the last day of kindergarten. They had picked me up right as the bell had rung and already had the camping trailer attached to my Gampy's truck. I remember he drove an old red truck that only had three seats, me always being in the middle. It took about two hours to get there, and another good hour to find our usual camping spot. It was deep into the woods and far from other people, as my Gammy wasn't too fond of being around other people while we camped. As they were setting up the camping trailer, I wandered around the campsite, loving to dig in the dirt for bugs. I had sat down on the dirt and started to dig, but I noticed how strangely quiet the woods were. It was never quiet, not even in the dead of night. I thought it was odd, but being only six I didn't think too hard about it. As I continued to dig for bugs however, I thought I heard my gammy call for me. She would usually call me Sugar Booger, that being a nickname she gave me since I was born. That's what I had heard, but it sounded like she was very far away and somewhat sick. Sugar Booger. I looked up where I heard it come from, that being from the woods. But there was no way she was there, because she was still unloading stuff from the truck. Even at the age of six, it didn't feel right, so I walked closer to my grandparents and stayed next to them. I soon forgot about my weird encounter though as we began to have fun. For the rest of that day, we played card games, sat next to the campfire as we ate dinner, and stared up into the stars. I always loved seeing the stars, there never being anywhere I lived at. We started to get sleepy around 9 p.m. I believe, and we started to get ready for bed. There were bunk beds that me and my gammy would sleep on, keeping our luggage on the top bunk and we would sleep on the bottom bunk. Due to my gampy's snoring, he would sleep on the couch of the trailer. I would always sleep next to the trailer window just in case I couldn't sleep and wanted to look outside. I fell asleep pretty quickly though, that being the last day of school and all, it was pretty exhausting. I remember waking up maybe hours later, it still being pitch black outside. It wasn't weird for me to wake up late in the night, since I always have had sleeping issues. I rolled onto my side trying to fall back asleep, until I heard. Sugar Booger. My eyes immediately shot open as I heard my nickname being spoken, but I knew it wasn't either of my grandparents. They were both asleep and never were known to sleep talk before. I started to feel this horrible feeling in my gut, like whatever I was hearing wanted to really hurt me. Even at the age of six I knew this wasn't normal. Then I started to hear tapping at the trailer window, it was soft, but loud enough for me to hear it. Tap tap tap. I just sat there, frozen in fear. I was trying to just brush it off as tree branches or rain, but I just knew that wasn't it. I could tell that it was really someone, or something, tapping on the window. Then I decided to be brave and look. Big mistake. I pulled the curtain away to only peek, and all I saw, were these large yellow eyes. They seemed glassy, yet, not entirely real. They looked like giant teddy bear eyes, but cold and unwelcoming. I remember in that moment I panicked, and quickly closed the curtain back up. I then hid under the blanket, that being the only thing I knew to do when I saw a monster. I could feel tears falling down my face, 
I never had been so terrified in my life. I just curled up into my gammy's side and clung to her all night long. That damn tapping only getting louder and more persistent throughout the night. I don't remember falling asleep, but somehow, I did. I do remember my gampy waking me up around noon, saying how if I got up quick enough, we could still go fishing. I honestly didn't want to leave the trailer at all, terrified that whatever I saw the night before would be out there. I did eventually go outside, but I was constantly looking around, horrified that whatever saw me last night would get me. My gammy immediately knew I was scared and pulled me into a hug when she saw me, asking what was wrong. I did tell her what I saw and heard, and surprisingly, she believed me. The next thing I knew she was telling my gampy that we were moving campsites. It took a bit to convince him, but he did eventually start to pack up and hook the trailer onto his truck. I was put into the truck so I could properly sleep, but I just couldn't. I kept feeling that I was being watched, thinking that every little noise was that thing I saw, that if I closed my eyes even for a second, it would get me. My gammy wasn't too far from me when I heard it again. But this time, it was my actual name, Aaliyah. In that moment, I had never seen my gammy move so fast. She looked up into the bushes where we heard it, then to me. She then got in the truck with me and pulled me into a tight, protective hug. I began to cry all over again, telling her how I wanted to just go back home. That's when my gampy got into the truck as well, and since I was sobbing so hard to the point I was coughing, he agreed we could go home. We started to head out of the campsite, still hurt that this trip had been ruined by something. But I still didn't know what. That's when something in my head told me to look back. I slowly did so, feeling an ice cold fear wash over me as I saw something. A red fox, sitting in the middle of the campsite, sitting there with large yellow eyes. The same red fox from my dream, somehow, curling its lips into an eerie smile. After that encounter, we never did go back to that campsite. We did continue to camp, but in more populated areas. I didn't tell my grandma what I saw, but she had told me to trust my gut. She knew that I was sensitive to certain entities, and that would help me if I trusted it. Now this would be the end of the story, but I'm afraid it isn't. There was one more encounter I had with the creature, and it was much more terrifying than the first time. The second encounter I had was when I was 17, many years later. By this time, I knew very well what a skinwalker was now, and I was still very paranoid every time I went near wooded areas. I still worried about seeing that fox, but I never really thought about it too much. Me and my two younger siblings were staying at a relative's house for Christmas, them living way up into a mountain area. I think they were my great aunt and uncle, but I'm not sure. Where they lived, there was no service at all, so unless we hooked up onto their Wi-Fi, we had no phones. I didn't mind the house, still loving the woods no matter what happened. Although at night I hated how they didn't close the window curtains, making it easy to anything outside to see inside. But I did feel safe while inside the house, knowing that they wouldn't let anything hurt us kids. Luckily it didn't snow where they lived, so we could go outside and run around. They also had this beautiful black lab, being about a year old, named Pam. She was very playful and normally wouldn't listen to anyone but my uncle. Although she was easily excitable, she was a good puppy. One of the days we were there, my little sister and our aunt went out to the store for a nice girl's day. Although I'm a girl, I wanted to go hiking with my uncle and my little brother. We left pretty early since the hike we were doing was four hours of walking into town. It was a really chilly morning but since we were doing so much walking, it felt great. We also decided to take Pam, it being a good way for her to get exercise and have fun. About maybe an hour into our walk, I started to slow down a bit, 
wanting to enjoy the beautiful forest. It was so peaceful, I could have honestly stayed there. But as we continued to walk, I started to feel something odd. I noticed how quiet the forest had suddenly become, hearing only our footsteps and my brother talking to our uncle. Pam noticed it too, her ears going straight up and growling softly. I started to pick up my pace to get next to my brother, worried that possibly a coyote or mountain lion was nearby. I knew though that they wouldn't be out at this time though, even if they were they didn't walk near the roads. My little brother was only nine at that time, and being the oldest sibling, my natural instincts to protect him kicked in. My uncle noticed the silence as well, telling us to stay close to him and Pam, who was now next to me and still growling. I began to feel that horrible feeling again, that ice-cold fear I once felt when I was six. I tried so hard to not think of the creature, but it was all I could worry about. I was scared, I felt like I was back to being that scared little six-year-old girl again. I had to stop for a moment though, seeing my shoelace came undone. I quickly kneeled down to tie it back up, trying to hurry and just get out of there. That's when I heard it. Aaliyah. In that moment, my heart dropped into my stomach. My eyes were widened and I could just feel myself start to shake from fear. It was right next to me. I heard it clear as day. I slowly turned my head, and there it was. That same red fox, still having those horrid yellow eyes, and that same demented smile. Only this time I saw it much more clearly. Its fur looked so matted and disgusting, the smell it had was like rotten, decaying flesh mixed with garbage. Its limbs were much too long for a normal fox, the back legs bending completely the wrong way. Those eyes were still the worst thing about it, but now they looked emptier than I had remembered. I wanted to scream, to run, to cry, but I just couldn't. I was frozen as I was, too scared to even blink. Then I heard it speak again, this time however, it had mimicked my little brother's voice. Found. You. Before anything else could happen, Pam suddenly jumped in front of me and started to bark like mad, snapping and growling so aggressively that it scared me out of my frozen trance. When I looked back, it was gone. I used that moment to run over to my brother and uncle, who didn't see what I saw as they were too far ahead now. But I heard my uncle start to pray and sing a song under his breath, keeping my brother and myself close to him. I was just too scared to even look back, so I just kept my eyes on the ground and refused to stop walking. Pam had stopped barking, but she was still loudly growling and never left my side as we continued our hike. My little brother was a bit worried, but he just thought it was a coyote. When we finally made it into town, my uncle had called our aunt and told her to pick us up, saying something about how it wasn't safe for us to walk back. Thankfully she did come and get us, but she was confused since we talked about that hike for days. On the car ride back, Pam never left me alone, she was right with me the entire time. She knew that thing was after me, and she protected me. I was very grateful that she was with us, who knows what would have happened if she wasn't. When we got back to the house, I was talked to by my uncle and aunt. Once I told them what happened and what I saw, they had started to pray and check that all the locks were shut tight, my aunt putting something around the doors. I now believe it was probably ashes, but I never did find out. Unfortunately, this made our Christmas vacation cut short, as they were worried that I was not safe while still in the woods. We had to be taken home the next day them making an excuse of how there was an emergency with a friend and that they had to help them out. I felt horrible that this Christmas was ruined, but once I did leave the woods, I truly felt safe again. Before they had to drive back home though, they told me that it wasn't my fault, and that luckily it didn't hurt me or the other kids. It did make me feel a bit better, but it still brought up a lot of questions and worries. 
It was still around. How? Why? What did it want with me? Does it want my skin? My soul? Was I just going to be tormented by this thing forever? I still don't have answers to these questions, and that's what really scares me. Now, I've long moved from California and now live in Kentucky. I do live in woods, but so far, that thing hasn't found me. I know that seems very stupid on my part, but life had changed a lot when I was growing up. I was given no other option to live somewhere else and my grandpa in KY was kind enough to let me live with him. So please don't call me an idiot for moving to the woods when I had no other choice. Anyways, while I'm happy it hasn't found me, I'm still worried. Can it still find me? Is it still hunting me? I'm not close to anyone who knows truly on how to get rid of this thing. And that's why I'm telling my story now so I can possibly find help. So please, if there's anyone out there who does know, help me. I cannot confirm this happened, as far as I know, it did. For context, I live with my grandparents, my mom, and my brother. We live about 20 minutes away from town. My mom stays in a shed outside, sometimes with her girlfriend, but everyone else stays inside the house. Also, there's a cow field by our yard, we don't own it though. My mom has always stayed awake at night usually busy doing yard work, drawing, or cleaning. But recently she started hearing noises at night. I wouldn't trust the stories if it was only my mom, but her girlfriend and my brother have told me they heard things too. But last night my mom, her girlfriend, and my brother were outside, I was asleep. And they started hearing noises in the woods around the house, they got a bit nervous but they didn't want to go inside yet so, instead, they went to the car and sat inside it for a bit. So then they were talking like normal, and the dogs start barking, at the woods, at the cow field, and in the yard. Now they're more nervous. My mom remembers that the night vision goggles are in the car, so she starts looking around with them on, and she sees eyes, all around them. She doesn't say anything about it though. Then while looking around the cow field, she sees something that looks like herself. She's freaked out but doesn't say anything about it until they got inside. Because my mom didn't know if what she saw was real, my mom has some mental issues. This morning she asked to borrow my computer, so I agreed. The goggles I mentioned earlier can take pictures and videos so she looked over the pictures she took. Her girlfriend agrees that the thing in the cow field looks like her. And my brother told me about all of this a few hours ago. I don't know if what my mom had seen was a skinwalker, or something similar, but I want to get away from this horrible property. I might update if something like this happens again, though I hope nothing happens. I had a creepy experience last night. I'm not typically a person who has supernatural experiences and I don't think I truly believe in them. Let's say I'm agnostic and respect the possibility, but don't have personal experience. I'm not going to go so far as to say I saw a skinwalker, I just don't know enough about them, and it seems like not an area where they normally are. But I can't get this off my mind. At around 10 p.m. last night, I was driving north on I-5 about 11 miles south of the 580 junction, which I guess puts me around Patterson, California. I-5 is an extremely well-traveled artery that runs NS in California. It's the primary route for going from LA to SF. The point is, this is not a road where there are pedestrians. At all. 
Cars are going 85 to 100 miles per hour regularly and there are a ton of semis that they are constantly weaving between. It's sketchy as F. In that moment, there weren't any other vehicles around me. All of a sudden my headlights lit up a person walking on the side of the road. They were walking with purpose, not seeming to be in distress at all. I had not seen a stopped car on the road anywhere nearby, and it was a very rural area. The person was shirtless with black pants, pale skinned, with long, just past the shoulders, very straight black hair. While at first I thought it was a man, as I passed I think I might have seen breasts. If it was a woman, it would makes this extra weird since women don't typically go topless in public. They might have had some bold black tattoos but I can't remember for sure, I only saw them for a moment. They didn't turn around when I passed so I didn't see their face. In retrospect, I realized they didn't have a flashlight and it was a very dark night with no moon yet. My instinct said that this was probably someone who was mentally ill and or on meth, though they weren't moving in a weird way, just walking like normal, other than the fact that they were just wandering around on the side of I-5 in pitch black. I think the thing that freaks me out most was my intense reaction to seeing this person. As I lit them up with my headlights, I took a very sharp breath in and my body was flooded with adrenaline. I had assumed in that moment that I was startled and, as I was traveling in the right-hand lane, I was afraid I might hit them. I wondered for a split second if I should stop and help but I dismissed that idea immediately as way too dangerous for a number of mundane, non-supernatural reasons. Only then did I remember all of the stories of mysterious people by the side of the road, and how one should avoid them at all costs. Don't even look at them. I remembered how supernatural beings instill a sense of intense dread and fear. It took me a while to get my body to calm back down, and I couldn't stop thinking about the experience for the rest of the drive. I still lean toward this being a normal human who possibly is going through some sort of mental health crisis, or maybe just a goth teenager trying to freak people out. But I have no idea how to check if there's someone who's missing, or if this is a known person in the area, or what. Me and my friend both had an experience seeing a headless animal that could have been a pig, dog, or a deer. It was large kind of and ran on four legs and was a dirty pinkish color. For me it suddenly ran across the road at a dark country road with no one around for miles. My friend was nearby civilization and the animal almost waited for them before dashing across the road. It honestly was a terrifying experience and even more so because I didn't know they had this same experience until just now. Has anyone else experienced this or knows anything about this? Was this a skinwalker? A little help on what it could be. This might have nothing to do with skinwalkers but I don't quite know how to interpret this. I'm from a small rural town in Georgia and I go to college kinda far. I have a habit of going outside at night to look at the stars and listen to music. I've noticed that two deer make their ways out of the woods and into the clearing of my backyard. A buck and a doe. The buck always stays further out, but the doe seems curious. She got a couple yards from me and something didn't feel right so I started yelling for her to go away. She looked at me didn't move and then proceeded to walk closer. I was completely shocked that she was not afraid of me and kept trying to get closer to me. I of course ran inside my house and locked the door. When I stared at her as I was leaving she didn't move. Fast forward a couple of weeks and I start to take notice that two horned owls have started showing up at our house. One is a female and the other is a male judging by their coloration and size difference. I was outside again and the female, judging by her size, flew and landed on the ground a couple of feet away from me. Stared at me and didn't move. 
I again ran inside the house. I never see the owls and deer at the same time. There are always two and the female is the more interested in me. I wanted to see if y'all had any theories. Also my parents tell me they are never there when I'm gone for college but show up every time I come home. Hey all, I've got some weird stuff going on and I've kind of been pointed this way for some help. I live really far in the sticks in South Central Pennsylvania. I'm a night owl because of the shift I work, some I'm often awake all night piddling about the house or watching Netflix. I was doing just that one night a few months ago when I heard and felt a solid thump against the external wall of my trailer. I paused my show and listened for a few minutes. Nothing. I went back to my show and heard slash felt another thump on the opposite wall. This time I was up, drew my handgun, I am who I am, I always have one, and moved to my door. As I was reaching for the handle I suddenly got the extreme urge to not open that door. My gut has gotten me out of some very bad things in my life, so I listened to it. I sat down at my couch and listened for a couple hours. Nothing else happened. The next night I heard a lot of movement outside of my trailer and instantly was up and went outside, with my handgun. I have a 1000 lumen light attached to it and I shine it into the yard. The house was surrounded by deer. Not too abnormal. They all kinda galloped away except one. It was way too big and didn't seem right. Misshapen. It was just far away that I couldn't see it super well with my light on it. It looked at me and my hair was up on my neck. I aimed at it and we kinda had a stare down. Just as my finger moved to the trigger guard it walked away real janky like. Not galloping like deer do. It stared at me the whole time until it was in the woods. I noped my ass back inside. Next night I was at work and when I got home my girlfriend asked me to take a pistol out of the safe, load it, and put it in the bedroom closet. I did so and asked why. She said that when she was feeding the baby in the middle of the night something thumped on the door to the trailer and it scared her. I told her nothing of my experiences with the thumping. What am I dealing with and what do you all recommend I do? I'm not sure what to think of this. He logical part of my brain is telling me that there are possible explanations for all this but I'm still kinda spooked. I'm a night owl because night time is usually when I'm the most productive. I procrastinate a lot so I use the night to catch up with school work. A couple weeks ago, at around 2 AM, I started hearing a weird animal noise coming from downstairs. I do have two cats so it's possible that they just got in a fight with each other, but it sounded different from what my cats usually do. It was raspier than my cats and had slight hints of a female voice in it. Again I might have just been sleep deprived and was hearing my cats fight but it scared the crap out of me. Last week I heard screaming outside my window, somewhere down the street, that actually lasted quite a while, this time it sounded a bit more natural. Imagine someone hyperventilating and screaming at every exhale, so it could have been someone messing around outside. I live in a small village so we don't have any meth heads walking around or anything. Now I've recently noticed that Therese sometimes a rhythmic tapping sound coming from the bathroom window that hangs over the sink. Our bathroom has an inclined roof, that kind of fades away after a while. I don't have the guts to look up and see if it's just the house settling or if someone or something is actually tapping at the glass and I probably won't ever try to look at it. Should I be worried or am I just paranoid? I was a freshman in high school at the time. We lived in the woods in Williamstown, New Jersey. Here we have things like the Jersey Devil and the Blue Hole most importantly in relation to this thread. 
Its well-known Williamstown was inhabited by the Lenai Lenape tribe of Native Americans, from whom the town derived its original name, Squankum. The name, Lenape for place where evil spirits dwell, was changed to Williamstown when the town's first post office was established. Yes I did pull that from Google but it is 100% true look it up yourself. More specifically the lakes is where my story takes place. We lived on the last lake, on the outskirts of town. It wasn't probably until 10 years ago these roads were all dirt paths for an idea. So my father had just built this new addition to our home. It faced the back of our house towards the deep woods, my driveway being the front but a good distance really in the woods. Great place for a murder scene. It was all glass windows which was terrifying for obvious reasons. This addition was to be the new living room and extension to our dining room. It was designed in a way while inside you couldn't see outside or towards the dining room or the rest of the house, unless you got up and looked. The only light source being the chandelier from the dining room, which was stuck on haunted house mode for no apparently good reason, oh and the horrible dining room table with that disturbing cloth for something to hide under. But there was the light from the television and living room if you so chose. I suppose to make it feel more cozy, snug with the furniture, but I digress. All of this will make sense as to paint a picture for you of what was to follow, so I remember my father would work very late on occasion. He closed a retail store enough towns over where it would be sometimes 11 p.m. before he came home and we ate dinner, not complaining, just was our thing. I'd spend my time in this living room watching television until he'd come home. This particular instance it must have been around late 6 p.m. ish when the dark starts creeping in. For the purpose of my story let's say my name is Jake I'm sitting there watching I don't know the food network, then it hits you like a ton of bricks. I say to myself hey Jake? Whatever you do Jake, just don't look to your right no matter what it is you do. Something is there that's not supposed to be there. In fact don't move a muscle from this couch because you're simply not equipped for whatever other worldly entity has the ability to make your dining room feel like a black hole where reality is just non-existent. The strange quiet, the chill, can't explain it. You know the feeling all too well so let's dive right in. So amid being frozen in my chair watching TV a few hours had passed by of me crying on the inside not really watching TV, when call it puberty, because I'd know better at this current age, something made me sneak a peek. Now I'm not trying to be dramatic, but they say eyes are the windows to your soul right? I believe you'd die of a heart attack had you looked onward any longer than I did. All jokes aside what I saw were two of the largest yellow slash green eyeballs looking directly at me and what I'd imagined to be an evil grin. Or maybe none at all. It could have wiggled its tongue, you'd overlook that every time, it's something you'll never forget. Almost like the Cheshire Cat. I'd say its eyes were just shy of the size of grapefruits but that would just be too big. These were just two of the biggest eyeballs you'd wish you never see again lol, unmistakable by any non-fictional living thing this world has to offer. If it were fiction I'd say Schmeagle, but these eyes were not desperate, they burn through you, from another dimension. I'd compare it to what I'd imagine opening Pandora's box must feel like or seeing a new color not on the spectrum. Just not for human consumption. I imagine this thing wanted to pretend to be our cat. It was not our cat. It was not a cat. It was highly disturbing mimicry of some sort. I spent the rest of those two hours waiting for my father to come home like it never happened. I believe her the fear was so pure. One can only make a comical comparison to accurately describe what took place. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I don't know its purpose, but judging how that night ended, I believe that in my fear, those eyes that saw around corners seemingly knew what state it put me in, loved it, intended it, possibly worse and was drinking from me. Literally from the moment I said Jake don't look to your right, until my father came home. 
I told my dad what happened he laughed, took me out to our local diner spot, came back chandelier was smashed into a million tiny pieces. Hand on the Bible. We talk about this often. Cat's blank stares scare me to date. Wondering if I had a skinwalker run in. So I live in Colorado along the I-25 corridor but I was out in the endless emptiness of plains that resides out east of there. I've been told conflicting stories on whether or not they reside in areas of Colorado so I am curious what you guys think. Anyway on to the story, I am a car guy and was out in the long straight roads in the area doing some pulls and top speed runs for my car. As I was driving my car briefly made a weird noise my radio cut out and headlights seemed to dim, curious as to what happened I stop and open my door ready to pop the hood and see what the issue was. As soon as my finger touched the hood latch release I was just overcome with this freezing and paralyzing sense of dread. I somewhat panicked and put my foot back in the car and closed the door and it slightly subsided. Going with my gut I decided to just turn tail and run so I put my car in gear and made a U-turn since I was on a dead end. As I turn around the edge of my headlight illuminates two humanoid gray figures I glanced at and sped off. They were standing slash sitting slash whatever about 50 feet from where I was just sitting. I went home and was unable to sleep for a while laying in bed with my gun close by with this endless feeling of paranoia. Once I finally drifted off into sleep I remember having strange nightmares about nothing specific but just overall terrifying things. My husband and I are currently in a scully camping on BLM land, Bureau of Land Management. He prefers to not use the bathroom in our scully. So he went to the outhouse. After about 20 minutes he comes back and is really freaked out. He asked me if I was outside the bathroom meowing at him. I told him I wasn't, I've been inside reading a book and cuddling our dogs. He said he kept hearing a meow in my voice. I know a meow, so obviously a possible cat is what you're thinking, my husband and I meow at each other. We've been doing this for over 15 years and I have a specific way I do it that can't really be mistaken for a cat. I usually meow when I want him to come look at something. That's what he swears he heard. He said he felt dread each time he heard it and all the hair on his arm stood up. I questioned him if there was any chance it was a cat at all and he said there is no doubt that it was a human pretending to meow but exactly my voice. He's so freaked out he refuses to leave the bus or let me take the dogs out. What do you make of this? Should I be worried? I'll try not to make this too long. When my brother was about nine, him and my parents were getting ready to leave. He ended up going outside first and walking towards the backyard since the door was closer to the backyard. We would walk around the back of the house to the driveway which couldn't be more than 25 feet from one end of the house to the other. He said he stopped when he noticed something standing by one of the cars. He said it had a big head, its skin was pale. Said it turned its head a little like it noticed him and then zoomed off deeper into the backyard. He ran back inside crying hysterically. There were some more details I might be missing but those were the main ones I can remember as I don't really want to ask him about it and make him remember something like that. It's been about 8 years since then. But yay that backyard always creeped me out at night and I never felt comfortable back there at night. Even before this happened. Also during this period before this happened I had experienced sleep paralysis for the first time and was going through some real hardships. The reason I thought it might be a skinwalker was because there was a night, not sure how long before this incident, where I heard a woman screaming for help outside. It sounded like it was farther down the street though. 
I was compelled to go look. Teen hormones were telling me I could help this woman, but I didn't dare even look out the window. Cause it just didn't feel right. Also my brother has said he's heard someone call his name from outside but he also just ignored it. The description to me sounds like the rake but I thought it might also be a skinwalker. I don't know, any thoughts? I've been into the skinwalker topic for a while, as expected I've come across the cattle mutilation topic, I don't even know if it's skinwalker related. I would like to hear more opinions or theories about this topic, or even know if it's connected to skinwalkers, so here's what I know. The mutilations usually take place in big terrains, that belong to cattle raisers. The attackers usually remove the tongue, the eyes, the lips, and the reproductive organs. The removals look like they were preformed with extreme precision, and there is no blood, or any human or animal traces around the corpse. I've had a similar experience with a goose I had in my farm, I've had two encounters in that same farm. We found the goose's body in a horrifying condition. Its head was placed in the front gate and its rear on the back gate, in the opposite side of the front gate. Its guts were all splattered across the terrain, after reuniting the remains, it was pretty obvious whatever attacked the goose didn't took anything with it, apart from the beak. There were no traces of predators or even an attempt of escaping, since there would be a lot of feathers. I wanted to find out what had killed the goose, so I searched about predators in my area, went for walks in the woods near the farm, talked to people, I found nothing. The only possible existent animals there would be the neighborhood cats, but when I talked to them, they told me and showed me that they locked their cats at night, the time the attack occurred, so I quote on trying to find the one who did that. One or two years later I had the encounters, of unsettling voices calling from the woods, when there was almost no criminality in this location, nor even people reported missing. More odd events took place, including chicken mutilation, but it all stopped out of a sudden when the forest surrounding the farm was cut down, only leaving small growing trees. I'm very open to hear theories and explanations to this. My Arizona Encounter I was driving with my friend to his home in southern Arizona. We had to drive through several reservations, mostly Navajo, to get there and he warned me that if I saw anyone standing by the side of the road or in the road that I shouldn't look them in the eye or even pay attention. A couple hours into the drive only me and my friend, who was driving, were awake. I saw a man dressed all in tan leather and wearing a large, wide-brimmed hat standing by the road. I didn't listen to what my friend said and looked at it directly. Every couple of miles, I saw this same man always on the road, always looking at me. I got glimpses of his face sometimes, he appeared to have none. Eventually I shut my eyes until we got to his town because I was afraid. I didn't see anything further while we stayed there. We go back to the west just about every year. The last time we went, we spent a night in a town in the mountains where his family had a cabin and we got stuck in the snow. We called a towing company and a single man came to help us out. We talked at length with him, or at least I did. I recall him being native, with long black hair and wearing a tan suit, including an animal skin on his shoulders. No hat like the person I saw on the road, he was very friendly and wanted to eat dinner with us. We said no because we didn't have enough food for him and us. He offered to go buy us food and bring it back. We said no to this also. Recently, my friends and I were talking about this day. They didn't see a native man. They claimed that we were helped by a man with short, blonde hair and a southern accent. That he was wearing snow gear and never asked to eat with us. My friend asked me if I had seen anything unusual somewhere else and I told him about the man on the road. He told me that I saw a skinwalker and it was following me. 
I live on the East Coast so he proposed that it only came looking for me when I was in the area. Since that encounter, I have almost constant dreams about going back to Arizona. What do you make about this encounter? Besides my one friend, no one else believes me. It creeps me out to this day. I went to Nevada a few weeks ago and had no incidents. We're supposed to go back to Arizona in the winter. I'm a little nervous. I was driving home from work one night, and as I was about to go around a curve I remembered thinking, one of these days a deer is going to run out in front of me. I kid you not as soon as it ran through my head a huge deer jumped out of the tree line. However once I came to a stop it didn't look like the deer I saw. The more that I looked at it the more it looked like a bipedal creature. We made eye contact and it walked towards my truck a bit, but I took off terrified. Keep in mind I live in an area where there's a ton of deer, and it's not unheard of that when Digos are around. I've just never seen one here around here. Creature at Alaskan Military Base In the late 2000s my friend, let's call him James, went to go smoke weed with his buddies inside military base when it was more publicly available still trespassing though. He ended up finding a good spot in the woods with his friends and about 30 minutes later he notices his friend, let's call him Joe, keeps looking back behind the bushes. James asks what's wrong and he notices that Joe has a face of shock. He looks over and sees this tall black figure with a head shaped like an upside down triangle and it's mimicking what Joe was doing. They stare at it for about 30 seconds and then James is like yo what the f is that? And they bolt into the woods and run as fast as they can screaming holy crap, WTF. Absolutely terrified as they run then that's where it ends. But it gets crazier because that same friend that was being mimicked by the thing had bad things happen to him after that. And before you say oh they were smoking weed so of course. This was before they even started. This also comes from someone who doesn't lie. My job is in the middle of the woods and corn field. It's a juvenile facility and the kids told me about a skinwalker and a wendigo in the fields and woods and everyone had stories and encounters. They've heard their names called, creatures staring at them from the kitchen window and it's scary at night because there is little light outside. I'm terrified because I have to do the 5 p.m. shift and I'm not trying to get eaten. What do you think I should do? I live in Iowa on the corner closest to Missouri and Illinois. My grandpa is Native American and refuses to have the conversation with me about it. And I was told if you said it then they will come for you. The whole facility is haunted and it's been confirmed. I don't know what to do. I saw a skinwalker recently. It was about a month ago when I was helping out my father-in-law in his old scrapyard working on an old Ford Mustang. He had the car for the longest time but it was a complete wreck, it would cost more for a shop to work on it than it was worth so he decided he would keep it around in case he ever found the opportunity to start working on it himself. Anyway, due to business being slow in December he decided to take some time off and start working on the car and asked me to help knowing that I'm a mechanic at one of the shops in town. We'd spent the day digging through the various scrap piles looking for parts that would work in the Mustang and by the time it got dark we'd assembled a fair few bits and pieces, including some original parts for the engine. By the time we had finished moving all the pieces into an empty tool shed, it was getting pretty late. So I decided I would go get my car to take him back home and then head back myself while he locked up. I turned a corner and saw my father-in-law standing by my car. This was impossible. I looked at where I had come from and he was still at the tool shed admiring all the parts we had gathered. But then I could see him clear as day in front of me, lit up by a street lamp. Stupidly, I started walking closer and closer to the man who stood by my car and was horrified by what I saw. 
It was my father-in-law, but a crude copy of him. He was just standing there with this horrifying open grin, his mouth full of teeth like dog teeth or wolf teeth. His eyes were pitch black and his skin was a light, mottled gray. He looked right at me, didn't say a word, then started walking towards me. Without hesitation I turned and ran back towards the tool shed but it was too late. Whatever that thing was managed to grab me and I screamed. I tried to fight it off, punched it, kicked it, everything I could do. What I didn't see was my father-in-law coming up to us with his 12 gauge he carried around, though I did hear him take a shot. The thing that was on top of me looked at him and decided two was too many before running off on all fours. Neither of us want to talk about it, but I can't stop thinking about what happened. Fortunately I wasn't cut up too bad and was able to explain it all away by saying I was in a bit of an accident when searching for scrap. But it bothers me and I know it still bothers my father-in-law. This is a creepy pasta, but nevertheless an interesting one. My mother was a skinwalker. She killed my father and sister when I was 12 and she very nearly killed me as well. It was all part of some ritual she wanted to perform to turn her into a skinwalker. I'm not sure on what exactly happened due to my injuries and the shock of the events, but what I do know is that someone called the police and they managed to stop her from finishing me off. This isn't something I normally talk about but recently something happened that has me concerned for my safety. After the police arrested my mother, she was sent to an asylum for the insane where she stayed for the last 10 years. She escaped a week ago, after killing two nurses and a guard. I'm scared she'll come after me and so I've been moving from place to place. I'm scared and I don't know what to do. Story 2. The real legends of skinwalkers as told by the Navajo speak of life and death situations between the Navajo and skinwalkers. A friend of mine recounted a family legend that was passed down to him and his two brothers. Long before Europeans settled the land, the Navajo often battled skinwalkers to protect the tribe. One of the ancestors of my friend was said to have battled the most powerful skinwalker ever to exist. The battle raged for days before both eventually died from their wounds. I'm not sure if skinwalkers exist, but the legend is kind of awesome. To this day I still don't know what happened or how to explain it. I live in Yorkshire, England which in some places is a very green area with loads of trees and hills etc. Where I lived as a child growing up I lived relatively close to a woodland area with roughly 5 to 10 miles of woodland. Now as a kid this was amazing with my friends as we could play hide and seek or build tree houses and forts for hours so I was never scared of it with or without friends. On one situation I was walking in the woods when I was around 8 alone. I remember it being dark but only around 4 or 5 pm so it must have been the winter season. My friends and I had been working on a fort and I was collecting sticks for it in my spare time as I was really devoted to it. Fun fact when I went to visit my hometown last year the fort was still there just looking extremely abandoned with old cans and crisp packets on the floor. I knew roughly where I was but wasn't too sure when I found a weird formation of rocks. It didn't mean anything to me as me and my friends made things like this but this was not us and it was definitely man-made. I decided to stay around the area because I didn't want to get lost. After two or three trips back from there to our fort I noticed a deer in the woods. My dad had told me there was deers and foxes in the woods but uncommon to see. I was so excited so I followed it. Now looking back on it it moved very unnaturally with it almost jumping and skipping like it was brand new to walking on four legs. As a kid I didn't think anything because I'd never seen a deer before so I didn't know how they moved. A couple minutes after following it I fell over a rock and made a huge crunch on some sticks, the deer froze. It slowly turned around and stared in my direction so I slowly got back up and stared at it behind a tree. 
It sniffed around the stones and suddenly stared at me. I'd say it was like around 100 to 150 feet away from me so I got scared and ran away. I ran for a minute or two until I caught my breath. I remember I had a mixture of excitement but also nervousness. I turned around to look back at the direction I ran and to my surprise the deer was there, staring at me. I hadn't heard anything follow me or anything. This really freaked me out so out of pure terror I run back out of the forest and didn't stop until I was safely out. The entrance to the woods where I got in and out was down a steep hill so I got to the bottom onto the street and stared back up. My heart was racing and there it was still looking out of the woods at me. It terrified me and still to this day I can still remember the chill that went down my spine. I was so scared I started crying when all I heard was don't. I looked around and no one was there. Then I heard come back please in an almost human voice. I could make out the words but it sounded almost inaudible, like a old radio. I ran back to my house and and cried to my mom and dad but they didn't know what to say. I had nightmares but still couldn't figure it out. I didn't go into that woods for a good couple months until I started going back with my friends again. The woods gave me a chill but I never had an experience like that again. I only realized what it could have been after reading up on skinwalkers a couple years back with me connecting the dots I'm sure it was a skinwalker. I'm happy I ran and I'm happy I didn't stay but I'll never know what could have happened if I went back in. Just a little context about myself, I live in Southern California near the Mojave Desert. Beyond our backyard is an open desert which is home to coyotes. We never had any problem with coyotes and we have a brick wall as a fence in our backyard. Also, I am a I believe it when I see it type of person, and I haven't really put much thought about skinwalkers until fairly recently thanks to all these TikTok videos that only come at night. Last night I had a weird encounter when I had to let my dog out to pee. It was about 0306 in the morning and as usual after I let her out I go back to my room and wait for her to bark to be let back in. After about 15 or so minutes I hear her barking heavily outside, as I went to go check it out, I made a crucial mistake and whistled as that's how I get her attention and signal her to go back in. She's usually pretty obedient and listens to me but this time she just wouldn't budge and kept on barking at the corner of our backyard. So I went and investigated what it is she's barking at and that's when I heard an owl hoot. Pretty normal so far as she's usually easily timid when it comes to noises. As I tried to grab her that's when I thought I heard a person's voice say hey which got me shook but then I told myself maybe it was just an owl hooting. I went ahead and continued to try and grab my dog but she ran the opposite way. And this time I heard a very weird like mimic of an owl hooting but mixed with a deep human voice. The first thing on my mind was I need to go back inside, grab a gun because maybe someone is trying to rob me. But then I also didn't want to leave my dog behind and it's very unlikely that they'll be able to scale the fence that easily. Now at this time is when I noticed the air smelled like a meat was left under the sun for days mixed with some rotten egg. Then all the skin walkers videos from TikTok came rushing into my head and I wondered maybe I'm overthinking. So I told myself okay if this is my time this is my time to go, but I have to grab my dog before I go back inside. Also during this time the mimic owl hooting is getting faster and eventually finally started to sound like an actual owl hooting. I don't know why but this kinda gave me closure that maybe I was overthinking it. I was able to finally grab my dog and I rushed inside locked the door, and went to grab a gun and an emergency flashlight. As I went back outside I can still smell but very faintly that rotten egg slash meat smell. The hooting finally stopped, checked the corner and didn't find anything. After being outside for about 5 to 10 minutes I decided maybe I'm still half asleep. As I was walking back to go inside the house, I glanced once more time at the corner and I'll never forget how bright the eyes were of the owl staring back at me and the ominous vibe it was giving. 
I quickly turned my eyes away and went inside the house, locked all the doors, and closed the curtains. I am not 100% sure what I heard in last night, but as I was inspecting the sand from outside of the fence this morning, I didn't see any footprints of any kind. So for now I'm hoping that maybe it was just a regular owl with throat problems, but I could never forget those ominous bright yellow eyes. This was told by my childhood bestie's uncle during a family gathering in the early 90s. They were a huge family and always had cookouts and gatherings, often inviting friends from church or work, so there would always be a nice crowd, and sometimes, it went into the evening. This night some of the men there were police officers so they were trading stories. While the grown-ups were talking, we preteens were sitting nearby talking kids stuff but I noticed the grown-ups tones kinda changed and I turned to listen. So for context, we are a small town right at the edge of the two different tribal reservations. The sheriff's office usually patrolled a 30 minute stretch of reservation that bordered the two different tribal lands. It is a flat forest that is beautiful during the day but scary as hell at night. There is one gas station, grocery in a little community right in the middle of this 30 minutes drive. It closed at around 9 p.m. each night. Around 11 p.m. One of the sheriffs got a call over the radio to check something out just south of that community. Now that area was the most isolated and there are very few people that live there. There are no street lights other than some out in the stretch of lands where people lived. So this part was a dark, dark area. The officer went out to the area and I don't remember if he found a problem. My vague memory is thinking it had to do with a fence down, which is bad because some people have herds of sheep, cows, horses so that could cause an accident. He took care of business and started back towards our town. He had only driven about a mile back when he saw a man walking on the side of the road. Again, on this stretch of road, it is so dark, even people can be hit by a car, so the officer stopped to at least get the guy home. The man was young, quiet, he had long black hair, his clothes were old and dirty. Often there are hitchhikers that go from that area to our town to hit the bars and then hitchhike home. But, this man was going in the direction towards town, which was weird because it was way past midnight, by now, nothing was open. The officer tried to get the man's address but the man just said take me down the road, I'll tell you when to stop and it was toward our town and the little community was also ahead so, that was probably where he was headed. The sheriff had a truck, when one picks up a hiker, they climb in the back and hit the window when their destination is reached. The officer said all right, jump in and started down the road. While driving, he'd take a look back and see the back of the man's black hair. After time was going by and the man wasn't knocking on the window, and they passed the community, and the houses were very few again, the officer decided to look back at the man again, and he was gone. Now if he was drunk, which he didn't seem to be when they spoke, he was probably passed out and missed his turn. He pulls over and thinks he is going to wake this guy up, he looks and there is no one in the back. The cop is like WTF. Tell me he didn't jump out. He has to be drunk. The cop turns around and tries to backtrack. He passed the community again, but he doesn't see anyone laying on the road or sitting or even walking. He turned into the gas station and kinda tells the dispatch about it and then decides to just head back to town. While driving, he says that he starts to hear a knocking on the truck. It was not the back window, and, at the gas station, which had lights even though closed, he did double check for a passed out man. The knocking continues and he keeps driving but starts to look in all his mirrors and he swears he sees a wolf-like figure at the right side of the truck, running alongside of it, on hind legs, banging the side by now. He is going 55 to 60 miles per hour at this point and this creature didn't look like it had any problem running right next to the truck, hitting it, 
The officer swerved and overcorrected but gets control and stops, but he stops for a second just to check his doors and get his wits and then hauls ass. He stated that he was going 80 to 90 and the road can be curved so the speed limit is still 55 miles per hour to this day. He was so terrified and he was so relieved when he went over the little hill to our town and saw the city lights. I never forgot this story and drive that road rarely, but never at night. For context, this took place in a heavily wooded neighborhood in Nebraska. Both me and my friend were high. Most of this can probably be boiled down to coincidence but I still feel like it's a cool story nonetheless. About a year ago, me and my friend, whom well called Jason, were driving around in my car smoking. We had been swapping ghost stories the entire time, and were both a little spooked. We pulled into a neighborhood that was surrounded by trees at around 11 at night. As we were driving, we came to a dead end and had to turn around. As I was reversing my car, Jason told me in a muted tone to look out his window. In the driveway of house that backed up to the woods was a huge black dog. Mind you, we knew the person who lived in that house and knew for a fact they were out of town and had brought their dog with them. It looked sickly, and it had walked out from behind their house. It didn't resemble any sort of coyote or wolf, and stumbled towards us with a gait that seemed off. Like its legs were different sized. We both just sat there like under a spell as it walked towards us and it completely halted about 30-ish feet away from us. It looked like it was struggling to breathe, as its whole body heaved when it stopped moving. Its eyes were the weirdest part, as even though we couldn't really make out any other features, its eyes seemed to glow like how they would look on a night vision camera. The music that had been playing had stopped, and I was just filled with dread from looking at it. I'm white, but not white enough to go find out exactly what it was. We both kind of snapped back into it, and I floored it away from the house as the dog just stared us down with its weird eyes. Once we had completely left the area, the music abruptly cut back in and we both agreed that what we saw wasn't right. The weirdest coincidence was that when I got home, my mom was watching a show on Skinwalkers and the first thing I saw when I opened my phone was a video on Skinwalkers. I don't know what I saw and I doubt it was a Skinwalker, but it was such an odd series of events that I don't know exactly what happened. Even as I was writing this post, my phone glitched out in a way I've never seen and shut down, deleting everything I had written and making me write it again. This happened five or so years ago when I was about 15. I was a part of a camp that took place in the deep woods in the northeast, and while there were many strange things that happened at this camp, I brushed them off. The cabins themselves were pretty far into the woods and a good 10 minute walk from the main camp. Thankfully, the staff and counselors had us go everywhere in groups of three whenever we had to leave their supervision. A lot of the girls in my cabin had to take night meds, which meant at about 9. 33 of us had to walk to the health cabin about 20 minutes away every night. Most of the time I was in the group of three as one of the girls with meds was my best friend. There were a few nights where as we were walking on the trail to the health cabin we would hear our names being called from the forest, or we would hear some whistling, or just very human-like noises. Being the pussies we were at the time, thank God, we never went off trail to check it out. Every year each cabin would go on an overnight which meant we would hike decently far up the mountain to actually camp in tents and all that. Each cabin consisted of about 8 people including the two counselors supervising us, and each cabin would go on their overnight at different times, meaning we were the only cabin in those woods at the time. While the weird noises and name calling on the main camp freaked me out a bit, nothing scared me as much as this one overnight. We had several tents that could have two of us each in it, which I shared with the before-mentioned best friend. 
Being the dumbasses we were we decided to put our tent a bit farther away from everyone else so the counselors wouldn't hear us talking after we were supposed to be asleep. Fast forward to night time. We're having a great time, playing truth or dare, gossiping, etc. We decided to go to sleep around 1 or so in the morning. Everything was normal, until I feel my friend vigorously shaking me awake. I start to ask what's wrong as she quickly shushes me to be quiet. Do you hear that? She whispered to me, visibly distraught. Reluctant and sleep deprived, I make somewhat of an effort to listen to whatever she was hearing. When I say my heart dropped and I have never been washed over with such a feeling of confusion and horror, I mean it. I heard my name being said. Not just by anyone, but my mom. My mother who was currently a 23-hour drive from where I was, now sounding as if she was 20 feet away from my tent at 4 in the morning. As I asked my friend what she was hearing she told me she had heard the same thing. I wish that she hadn't given me confirmation on the next to impossible thing I was trying to convince myself I was imagining. It went on for another 5 minutes with both of us sitting there like deer in headlights. Eerie silence filled the air as the name-calling stopped. The silence was quickly filled by a heavy breathing, but this time it didn't sound human. It was like the sound of a bull breathing, and was now about five feet from the tent. We sat there, shivering with our blankets pulled over our heads as our only defense. The next 20 minutes of the sound of breathing moving around the outside of our tent felt like hours. As quickly as the silence left, it then returned again. The blanket was then lifted off of our heads thinking whatever creature we were hearing had left. Then suddenly, the most ear-shattering, distressed scream could be heard from what sounded like a mile away. It was almost human sounding, if said human was being brutally tortured and murdered. These screams went on for about an hour, until the sun started to rise. At this point, with the safety of the sun's light, we decided to fall back asleep. No one else had heard these things, and to this day I haven't been able to come up with a rational explanation. Anyone here able to give me an idea of what it possibly might have been? I just had an encounter with a skinwalker? Me and my older brother, we are both Native American and strong believers of the skinwalkers, who is 24 years old, are driving from home when he starts to hear trees snapping and moving. He slows down to around 10 miles per hour and listen for a second. After a couple of seconds he speeds up and blasts down the road easily going 60 miles per hour plus. After we blasted down the road we stopped and listened at the stop sign. We look around and my brother spots it in the tree slim and skinny peering at us from the tree line. He screams then blasts off going 80 miles per hour down the road going all the way to 100 miles per hour. We drive a good distance and stop to see if it is still following. After a couple seconds we hear it again and we blast off once more. Now we sitting around on edge because we are seeing stuff close to our house. I'm pretty sure we're just paranoid. Keep in mind this started at 3 a.m. and now it's 5 a.m. Possible skin walker story from four years ago, still spooks me to this day. I'm not saying this was 100% a skin walker but the encounter did not feel natural at all. It was midday and I was driving home from work. I pulled into my neighborhood and got to my circle and parked in my driveway. When I got out of my car I shut the door and for some reason I pause and dart my head to the right to look at the end of the circle, felt like I needed to I guess. There was a large black dog, don't remember the breed, just standing there and we made eye contact for about 2 seconds. I felt strangely frightened and I ran to my door. When I looked back he was running towards me. I had to unlock my door frantically and was able to get inside and shut the door like a millisecond before he got to me. This doesn't seem that strange but let me explain. 
My circle is on the end of my street and the only way out is the other end of the street. I did not see this dog when I was pulling up, I have diagnosed OCD and one of the things I do is look at all the houses on the street before I pull into my circle to make sure there's not people out that I could run over accidentally and there's no way I can wrap my head around how he could have got to my circle by the time I got out of the car without me seeing him. The only way is he was at the end of the street out of sight and full sprinted to the end of my circle but even then it seems far-fetched. Another thing that feels weird about this encounter is that without seeing him prior to this I felt like I needed to look out to the end of the circle as soon as I exited my car, and there he was just standing there. The way I felt after staring at him for a second makes me uneasy too. I genuinely felt fear though having no real reason to. I'd also like to exclaim that was my first and last time ever seeing that dog. I lived in that neighborhood for two years at that point and have never seen that dog before. I lived there another two years before moving and still never saw him again. It was definitely not one of my neighbor's dogs. Edit. Something sort of similar happened to me. It was during the summer of 2019. It was about midnight when I woke up to scratching coming through my front door. I decided to look outside through the window and there was nothing there. Walking back to my bedroom, I heard it again. I decided to open the door this time. In front of me there was a large black dog. It had kind of humanoid eyes and it reeked. It didn't feel natural at all. I decided to approach slowly. Its head was not turning at all, but its eyes were staring at me. I then got closer but it got angry. It did not want to run, instead it started growling and slowly walking towards me. I didn't want to cause it to panic so I slowly started walking backwards. I managed to escape, or so I thought until I saw it staring at me from 50 feet away. Then it decided to fully run towards me. I locked my door and got a long knife. I sat in front of the door panicked. I fell asleep that way and when I woke up I was in the same place, still holding the knife. The next day I decided to check with my neighbors to see if it was one of their dogs, which it wasn't. Still, even to this day, the thing that scared me the most was its human-like features and its reek of old flesh. I'm in Ontario, Canada, in the countryside by the way. I'm 26 years old and I normally never get worried or scared. But three days ago I cried like a little baby because of how terrified I was. Six years ago my best friend died he got hit by a train while working. Three days ago I was hunting and to get to my spot there is an abandoned railway and on the right side of railway are a bunch of overgrown bushes. I walked past one of the bushes to hear a voice that sounded pretty familiar. I heard it calling my name and asking to come help over and over again kinda like a recording. I turn around and walk over about 10 feet to find my best friend's mangled body on the side of the railway. I immediately turn around and run as fast I can. But while I'm running I hear heavy breathing and footsteps right behind me. I mean the breathing noises were literally right down my neck like whatever was chasing me was right behind me. I don't know if this was a skinwalker or something else and still I'm shaken up about it. I need an answer to what I saw. This happened a couple months back. If I remember, July 2016. I was down at my lake house in Texas with my cousin. We had two houses right by each other, a guest house and a main house. One night me and my cousin were hanging out and we decided to go out and screw around, maybe go ride the pontoon for a bit. It was about 12, 30 AM and our grandparents were asleep but they trust us. So, me him are headed down to the dock. Well I'm grabbing my stuff on the table under the house while he is down at the dock lowering the pontoon. While I was grabbing my wallet I noticed something in the tree line right by the fence. It looked a lot like a coyote but three times bigger. And it was looking me dead in the eye. I was petrified. 
The big gate was the only thing blocking me and whatever that thing was. I then grabbed my wallet and walked pretty fast to the dock, and said nothing to my cousin as we got the boat off the dock and took off. We rode around for about two hours before we came back. When we came, I was gonna put the boat up while he went up to the house. While I was putting the boat on the lift I heard my cousin yell oh. I ran up to him and he was staring straight at that thing. This time it was across the dam fence. And staring at both of us. We were both frozen, to rift. He said run and we both ran as fast as we could up the stairs and into the house. I thought I saw it running at us but I don't know. We locked the big door and shut all the windows. We heard what sounded like growling all night long. Until about 6. 30. We asked my grandpa if he heard anything and my grandpa said I did. It sounded like something was banging on my floor. But I ignored it. By the way these houses were on stilts. Cause of a high chance of flooding. Me and my cousin told both my grandpa and grandma about it and they both knew what we're talking about as we all Indian blood in us and we all be live it was a skinwalker. So they told our parents and everybody else, and tore the place down, selling it and moved to another lake. Way more nice and a good amount of neighbors. If anybody can confirm what it was, please for the love of God, tell me. Adding on. For anybody that doesn't know I am Navajo, and a lot of my family knows about this stuff. Next month I am gonna drive over to that original spot if I can find it and see if I can spot it again. My skinwalker run in. For context I was 16 at the time. This was in Massachusetts in late 2019. I was sitting on my roof smoking a cigarette and, and it was pitch dark. This is something I did nightly. My backyard is completely enclosed with fencing and trees, so if an animal enters my property I'd hear it hop the fence. And I did. Though this sounded. Huge. I could hear the clomping of hooves, but the steps were much too heavy for an average deer. I got a horrible pit in my stomach. The side of the roof I was on, was right above where this thing was. I turned on my phone flashlight to see if I could catch a glimpse of what it was, but crappy iPhone flash only shines two feet in front of you, so I saw nothing. But suddenly, as I shone the light down onto whatever the thing was, it let out the most guttural blood-curdling screech I've ever heard. No animal I've ever heard could make that noise. Could it have maybe been a fat, rabid deer? Sure. But that thing sounded demonic. I freaked out and hopped back into my room, running downstairs to tell my dad to which he laughed it off. But I never forgot. The feeling that overcame me, I could feel it staring at me. Never felt so suddenly endangered before. I have another incident, happened the same year in the same neighborhood. I was walking home from a friend's house, and it was getting darker and darker. As I crossed the woods into my neighborhood, I heard something rustle behind me, emerging from the woods a few feet behind me, the same heavy walking and hooves I heard before. I stopped dead in my tracks. I got that same feeling, paralyzed with fear. But my body would not let me turn around to face whatever this thing was. I stood there for a few seconds, feeling its eyes on my back. Then I ran. I ran as fast as I possibly could, hearing the thing chase me a few blocks and then it just stopped. Only then did my mind permit me to turn around, and there was nothing. But the fear and panic I felt, I wouldn't just feel with some stupid deer or dog that followed me out. This thing wanted me. I'm convinced it was the same thing that visited me in my backyard not too long after. An Arizona Desert Experience So this is a story I've told to very few people due to it scaring me half to death, but it's coming up on a year since it happened so figure might as well share. 
I'm still pretty new to Reddit as far as posting slash interacting in communities is concerned so I hope I don't annoy anyone with the length of this. To that end I'll save anyone reading the suspense of knowing I did not see a creature, but I would swear on my life I felt the presence of something that I cannot describe. I was out west last year around late October slash early November for a backpacking and hiking trip. Suffice to say I needed to clear my head and this was part of a two-month sabbatical I took from my home. During this time I lived primarily out of my car on the east coast. For the portion of my hiatus related to this story I ventured to Utah. I spent eight days total seeing all five national parks and having generally a fantastic time. I would certainly recommend to anyone reading to visit any and all of those places. The thing I would not recommend, however, is to do what I did and go alone. I was gambling with a lot of different dangers in that I traveled by myself and both backpacked and camped by myself in some less than safe places. I was at a very low point in my life and struggling with depression. I felt very little reason to go on or care for myself at all. So I made decisions most rational people probably wouldn't make due to a lack of safety. The night of my encounter I guess we should call it, I was on my way from Zion to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. This was early in my trip and I had yet to see the stars in the desert. I'm from the east coast and there's too much light pollution where I am to really get a good look at the Milky Way. I left Zion about right before sunset and by the time I had crossed into Arizona the sky was full of stars like I had never seen in my life before. I pulled over on a shoulder, I imagine they're made for truckers to rest as this is a two-lane highway and no shoulder exists apart from these random sections I would come across, and just took it all in for about 15 minutes before driving on. Now the north rim is 3 hours and some change from where I was. Somewhere along the route I was messing with my music and managed to screw up my directions in a spot without great service. When I finally got it back I clicked the first Grand Canyon option that came up, figuring it would choose whatever was closest. That was my big mistake. I went up into the Kaibab forest and passed the turn I needed to take to get to the north rim without ever knowing it. I came down the road and into the desert once again, passing one small town before hanging a right into the nothingness of the desert before me. I had so much on my mind and had zoned out a bit while driving that I didn't really realize how long I had been on this trip. Eventually it hit me I should have been to the north rim by now. It turns out I had gone about 60 miles into the desert before ever realizing my blunder. During this time I saw less than 5 cars. Miraculously I had service and got the right route. Thankfully no one was waiting for me or traveling with me so I didn't consider it such a terrible mistake beyond lost sleep and the price of gas, so I thought oh well, at least while I'm out here might as well have another look at the stars. This is where it began. I pulled off in another one of those shoulders after turning around and got out. I don't really even remember looking up because I stepped out into what I can only describe as a presence. I felt a mixture of a lot of things. I felt watched, as though I was being stared at intently and viciously. I felt hated that is the only way I can describe it. Whatever was staring at me deeply desired to harm me and I could feel it shooting down my spine just seconds after I stepped out of the car. Never in my life had I ever felt anything like that, and I hope to never again. I will never forget the sensation of getting out of that vehicle. I had an instinctual feeling that I needed to get back in the car as quickly as possible and drive immediately. It was like an alarm in my head repeating over and over get back in the car right now and drive. Every second I stood out there it heightened. I wasn't out of the car for more than 20 to 25 seconds and even that seemed an eternity. I floored it out of there expecting to feel better quite quickly, I did not. I now felt another feeling I had never experienced and hoped to never again I was being chased. Even typing this now it still seems crazy and unbelievable to me, and I still try to rationalize that I psyched myself out, but I remain steadfast and convinced. 
I was going upwards of 85 miles per hour and I would swear on my life that something was behind me even at that speed. Paranoid. I kept tapping the brake lights to see if I could make out anything. But I couldn't. This dreadful feeling persisted until I saw the town I had passed earlier. Some 50 miles away from the initial encounter. I didn't feel completely safe again until I was into the Kaibab forest. Now I'm aware this far in the desert there's gonna be wildlife around me, but remember I didn't care a whole lot and I know full well there's not an animal that wants to be near me any more than I want to be near it, so I generally wasn't worried about that. Whatever this was I firmly believe was not an animal. I know that Arizona is a strange part of the country full of strange stories, encounters, and conspiracies involving government cover-ups and experiments, so I'm not sure exactly what to chalk it up to. I did some research after that, and the best I can figure I may have come across something similar to a skinwalker. I'll also say that I did venture out of the car several more times at night to see the stars while driving through Utah, and not once did I experience anything like this again. While I am a man of faith and I generally don't believe in a lot of urban legends, I do believe there is demonic activity and or an inexplicable amount of stories and encounters for me to simply say there's nothing to it. I was vaguely aware of some of these legends before my trip, but didn't pay a whole lot of attention to them. After the certainty I feel in my own experience and from what I've read, I can say that there is definitely some truth to these that I myself can vouch for. Thanks for reading if you made it to the end of this. Go easy on me if this is a crappy post it's one of the few I've ever made. Would love to hear y'all's thoughts on all of this or any explanations there might be. Feels good to share it. I literally just got back from camping a couple hours down from Page, Arizona at Lake Powell. I was lying in my tent looking up at the stars when I began to see some really strange activity up in the sky. Lights that were pulsing and rhythmically moving around what appeared to be some type of craft. Suddenly I was filled with the most intense fear I've ever experienced. It was the first time in my life I shook from being so frightened. It seemed like an irrational fear that went far beyond the experience of just seeing some weird stuff up in the sky. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I heard what sounded like the most inhuman high-pitched screech-slash-scream that blended into a maniacal laugh-slash-cackle. It sounded like it was within 100 yards of me. I've never heard anything like it in my life. My dog was with me and he started whining. Then in response, in the distance I heard the howling of a pack of coyotes. It happened again shortly after again with the coyote response. Of course my first assumption was that I was hearing a coyote scout signaling to its comrades. But I haven't been able to find any coyote cries that sound like it. I held my dog super close and almost crapped my pants. It was really weird that the timing of it was so close to my visceral fear response. Anyway, yeah. The friendly skies were not friendly that night. My Darwin City Story I live in Australia and in indigenous culture there are entities that behave almost identically to skinwalkers, and I'm not going to try and spell it, the whole uncanny animalistic look, janky movement and so on. These creatures will, once triggered, will pursue their target till either madness, in which the prey becomes one of the entities or until they can bait the target out between 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. this will result in the person being taken. The longer the target survives the more aggressive the entity becomes. And whilst unable to enter the house itself, it is able to interact with objects inside the building. Though to my knowledge, the main differences is that most are sealed into various cultural no-go zones, and I contact, rather than just inducing fear in the subject, it is what triggers the entity to pursue whoever made eye contact regardless of their location. Though you can avoid them by not making eye contact and they won't actively try to, people's eyes are drawn to the creature's eyes. Edit. 
Supposedly, photos can also trigger the creatures. The skinwalkers will also appear slightly different depending on the person, though only things like what animal it is, its height, or the color of its eyes. A few others interesting points that I have found is that 1. The creatures will almost always be near old mine shafts, hillside caves, chasms and the like, anywhere that has a natural enclosed area, and 2. There will be absolutely no animals living or moving around within roughly 500 meters of the entity's chosen den slash lair. So I was with my dad and a few of his friends sitting around drinking beer, when we got on the topic of freaky stuff. I told my Darwin story, and my dad told a couple I've never heard before. The first was from about 25-ish years ago when he was driving road trains between Port Augusta, Alice Springs and Cluncurry. He said that he pulled up at a truck bay at about 10.30 PM and got out to go for a leak and check the trailers. He got to the fourth trailer, then he said he gotta get the F out of feeling. When he got to Clint Curry, he said he was talking with some other truckies and they all said that there's something evil there, not at the stop, but about 50 meters off the road in a turkey's nest dam. The next one comes from Devil's Marbles. So he was driving around them following the road, when the radio and clock just stopped. Then there in the truck with him was my great granddad, who had been deceased for about four months, in the passenger seat. And it was just calm. What should have been a 20 minute section turned into a three hour section and he came out of it at dead on midnight. The second one sounds like a creepypasta, but, who knows. Aussie here. My time in the Northern Territory saw us live in Yellara which is close to Uluru. When we weren't working we'd go road tripping. This one day, we decided to go northwest of Alice and ended up at the Henbury Meteor Crater. We decided we wanted to walk the perimeter of it for a bit of fun. What I could quite shake was the feeling of something not right in the area. Now having read your other post, it makes sense that it may have been something evil. This place was eerily void of any animals or even sounds to be honest. It's like it was empty. But by walking the outside, I kept trying to look in the middle crater like I was being drawn to look inside but couldn't see anything out of the ordinary. I remember telling my friend that the place didn't feel right. So we were doing a night patrol for our annual camp and cause of safety there was a petty officer from Navy cruising around the area to make sure we didn't majorly stuff up. And we all had torches, so we go around and my quad leaders got us lost. We wound up sitting around far about 15 minutes. So me and a mate Brody were sitting back a bit and I was laying on a narrow track next to an asbestos warning sign, Old Demolitions. And out of the 10 in our group, me, Brody and the radio carrier heard these noises. It was the sound of footsteps in the dried leaves, too light to be the PO, and too infrequent to be a dog or a dingo. And then there were loud dropping noises, like someone throwing a large rock. None of the other squad members were throwing them, and there were four of them, each getting slowly closer. Then I sat up after Brody froze. He pointed at a figure, between nine feet tall and it was black, pitch black, like black though its head was obscured from view. We could see it stand upright on two legs and it just stood there, as thin as the trees around it, breathing, watching, waiting. Like that feeling of being watched by something that can't directly see you. My dad spent some time living in a small town called Gallup in New Mexico. Gallup neighbors the Navajo Nation to the west and the Zuni Rees to the south. 
He used to go on hikes alone every weekend, and often, foolishly, stayed to see the sunset and found himself trekking back to his car in the night. I visited and went on a few of these hikes with him, and I can say that there were many times when our car was the only one parked and it truly felt that we were alone in the vast desert or canyon. My dad shared that one night, he came across what looked like large animal footprints in the snow. But nothing like he had ever seen in his life. And he said that they were spaced out as if it had been walking on two feet. He swears it. He rushed back to his car and was obviously spooked. The town is full of Navajo people, and when he tried to tell his story to someone, they appeared afraid and immediately shut him down. They said that they don't talk about these things. That's how I've ended up fascinated by stories in groups like this one. I've known about skinwalkers my entire life. I'm not a Native American or anything, just grew up close to a reservation. But I didn't encounter one until several weeks after I turned 24. Me and my dad would often go out hunting deer. He never brought meat, always preferring to source his own meat rather than risk buying it from a store or farm. He also hates factory farms, due to their treatment of farm animals. So when he called me up to ask me if I wanted to go hunting with him, I thought nothing of it and agreed to go with him. We agreed to spend a day hunting in this area my dad loved to go hunting in since it would see a lot of deer. The morning we spent hunting was unusually quiet. That area of forest usually had plenty of animals, not just deer, passing through as a lot of different natural trails met up and intersected there. It wasn't just the wildlife. My dad was unusually quiet too, even when we were driving to that art of the forest, there was a road with a parking spot for hunters about three miles south of where we were. Normally, he wouldn't shut up about the small farm he had, he grew carrots, potatoes and a few other crops, or about the various tractors he would fix up for many of the local farmers. But he was quiet all day. The entire thing felt off to me and I didn't like it. I straight up asked him if he was okay and he took a while to answer. He simply told me he was okay, just preoccupied with something. It wasn't like him at all. I was about to ask him when we heard a coyote pack go insane off in the distance. That isn't odd in itself and the area has several prominent wolf and coyote packs whose territories all meet up here, but it certainly didn't help the uneasy feeling that was evident. I turned back to my dad and he was as pale as porcelain. He just sat there, frozen in fear upon hearing the coyotes off in the distance. That wasn't like him at all. We heard coyotes all the time. He kept looking all over the place, as if he were expecting something he didn't want to see walk into view. That's when he focused on a spot right in front of us. At first I didn't know what he was looking at. I tried to find whatever it was but gave up. It was only when I was about to turn to him and ask when I spotted it. There was a figure hiding in the forest, just far enough away that I couldn't make out any real details. It. It looked like a person. It wasn't uncommon to see other hunters out in the forest, but whoever this figure was didn't seem like a hunter. I turned to my dad and asked who that person was. He simply continued to sit there silently, staring at the person in front of us. It felt like a lifetime before we heard the coyotes again, this time a lot closer to where we were. Whoever was watching us heard the coyotes as well, but apparently took more exception to hearing them. Without any warning, it let out this loud, guttural call no human could possibly make. What it did next haunts me to this day. Without missing a beat, it got on its hands and feet and began moving away from us and towards the direction of the coyotes. It looked so unnatural, like it really was just a person trying to run on all fours. The last thing I saw was whatever it was begin running like a coyote at full speed. It wasn't even five minutes later when me and my dad could hear the coyotes go insane as they tried to fight something off. 
Neither of us said anything as we practically ran back to the car we used to get there. My dad never went hunting in that forest after that. He passed away last year, never once talking about what we had seen that day. My sister and I were heading back home from the beach. She was asleep in the passenger seat and I was stuck driving in the foothills for an hour. It was about 9 p.m., so the highway was fairly empty. It was just miles of nothing but hills and open lands. From afar, I saw a creature on the side of the road, which I first assumed to be a deer, there's deer in the area. It stood there till I was a few feet away and that's when it decided to sprint in front of my car. I caught a glimpse of what looked like a naked human-like creature, it was well adjusted to walking on all fours. It had the hands and feet of a human, but pointy ears like a dog. It just looked like some giant, flesh-colored creature the size of large deer. The thing that freaked me out the most was that it seemed to have glitched as it crossed the road. It all happened so fast, it gave me a disgusting feeling in my gut and I could feel my blood drop to my feet. A few weeks later, I saw the same kind of creature. This time the incident happened a couple of blocks away from where I live. I happen to live in the rural countryside, where there's nothing but grapevines for miles. I was making my way to the freeway when the same kind of creature, ran in front of my car. I saw it glitch the same way but this time into a fence. I was in shock cause I had just seen it run through a fence as if it was transparent. I was so shaken up, I didn't want to go back home that night. I'm not confirming that what I saw were skinwalkers, but I'm just sharing my personal experience of what I saw. At the time, I was very fascinated with skinwalkers and often talked about them, which could have possibly manifested them into my presence. My job is in the middle of the woods and cornfield. It's a juvenile facility and the kids told me they're at SW and a W in the fields and woods and everyone had stories and encounters. They've heard their names called, deer staring at them from the kitchen window and it's scary at night because there is little light outside. I'm terrified because I have to do the 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. and I'm not trying to get eaten. What do you think I should do? I live in Iowa on the corner closest to Missouri and Illinois. My grandpa is Native American and refuses to have the conversation with me about it. And I was told if you said it then they will come for you. The whole facility is haunted and it's been confirmed. I don't know what to do. Activity in the middle of a national park. My family and I have been living in the middle of Missouri for a couple years now and things have been crazy, to say the least. A list of our experiences. It started out pretty passive stuff. The sound of old-fashioned radios and music boxes. Despite looking everywhere including our crawl space beneath the house, we have never found anything. Everyone in the house has heard this sound on separate occasions despite not everyone believe it was necessarily something paranormal. Tapping. Windows. Walls on backs. We don't have rats, we've checked, no branches up on trees or on ground windows. E. Our windows are feet off the ground because we live on a steep hill. Scratches. I didn't believe in this crap and acted like a D-head and was trying to freak my sisters out. The lights flickered rapidly and I was laying on my back on my phone, and I felt a burning sensation. I thought it might have a tick so I asked my sister to check, only to find three scratches. I'll attach a picture in the comments. This is when we got my mother involved, who got in contact with a childhood friend who happened to be a cardinal on Facebook. He told us to have a priest bless the house, and to get me checked for mental illness, which I do have, but don't necessarily understand why I would need to check for mental illness when I had visible scratches. Things started to happen on the daily after we heard a woman shriek for 7 full seconds outside our window around midnight. 
We were paralyzed for about a second and bolted to get our dad, and the gun. We have had escapee prisoners on the loose around our area before, and a lot of meth heads who wander around our street. So we didn't chalk it up to something spooky, but rather something we could shoot at. We checked the entire perimeter of our property, and nothing. We didn't sleep, static in the corner of my room. Almost every single night I heard static from the same corner. I took back my dresser and got so tired of it I unplugged everything in my room because I thought it was something else explainable. The TV hum or something. But it's still just static. My father came in, and he heard. My sister heard it and it caused her not to be able to sleep in my room cause it kept her up and made her lightheaded. One night, the static got too much and I went to sleep with my sister. I'm 17 but this thing was getting old, and I was thoroughly scared of our house at this point. We seriously were so scared of our own property, we bought a blow up bed so I could sleep in sister's room when stuff got too much. I had to go to the bathroom, but I didn't want to go alone because it's next to my room, so I took my sister and dared her to sit in my room for the duration of my pee. To my horror I heard her footsteps bolt out and I found her hyperventilating on her bed. She had seen a pale hand dart out from under my bed, which is like her worst fear. We locked the bedroom door to sleep soundly, but every time we looked over, it was unlocked. This happened five times before we gave up. The closet door also kept opening through the night. We live on a family property, with our grandparents having lived here my mother and her brother, and our mother always passed down the wisdom that when the sun starts to go down, you go inside. I've always thought it was just because we have coyotes and the occasional wolf, now I wonder. Our outside experiences include, seeing black masses move through the forest and behind trees, children and mothers crying in the woods behind us. Screams. Just screams. Good trenching screeches. We've had foxes and wildcats. We're experienced in wood etiquette, and this is just different. The woods going silent, and the cracking of one path being made through the woods, with us seeing nothing. Eyes watching us way too far off of the ground, and way too focused to leave us comfortable staring back. This is only the beginning. Please leave a comment. Is this a SW? Is it just a ghost or something? Any advice is appreciated. We just want this to stop. Thanks for anyone who read this fully. I was on holiday when I saw my first skinwalker. It was in 1991 and my parents took me to a campground in Texas that wasn't far from an area with a known coyote problem. We were only staying there for a week. But being the young kid I was, I got bored very quickly. It only took three days before I ended up wandering away from my parents and off the campsite itself. Mind you, this was before everyone had cell phones and cameras and all that in their pocket, so if someone went missing, they really went missing. I wasn't sure how long or how far I walked, but I remember ending up near a small patch of trees. By now I was getting hungry, so I called for my mother. I assumed, being the dumbass kid that I was, that she wasn't all that far from where I was. I turned around but couldn't see either of my parents anywhere. Hell, I couldn't see much of anything, save for an old dirt road and trees. I started to get scared as I realized that there wasn't anyone around, let alone my parents. I panicked and started running the way I thought I came but ended up tripping and falling over. I'm not ashamed to admit that I started to cry. I was only six at the time. But then I started to hear my mother call for me. I started looking around but couldn't see her. She called my name again and I started getting confused. I couldn't see her anywhere yet it sounded like she was right next to me. I kept looking around getting more and more upset when I heard it. A gunshot followed by what sounded like a dog screaming. 
Then I heard my mother again, this time calling for help. She was begging and pleading for me to come and help her. Then another gunshot and I thought I could hear her howl in pain. Then a coyote came running from the small patch of trees, followed very quickly by a tall man. He raised a rifle and shot the coyote, killing it. He made sure it was dead before turning to me and asking if I was alright. Long story short, I fully believe that coyote was really a skinwalker trying to lure me into the trees and that the man saved my life. He turned out to be a family friend of my uncle who lived near there and managed to get me back to my parents safely. It's been 30 years since that day and I've devoted my life to hunting down skinwalkers. They're rare enough that I've only ever encountered 17 throughout my life, 12 of which I killed personally. But there are still more out there, waiting, watching. I'm always ready for my next encounter. I think you guys here might have a healthy appreciation for this strange story I was told by some Hopi children in Nii, Arizona, inside the Navajo Reservation. Basically the short version of the story is that my grandma had been living with the Hopi for a few years and so when my family went to visit her we went to the Hopi Reservation with her. I was probably about 10 at this point so me and my little brother were told to go play with the other kids and so they played with us and showed us around. We did this for a while until sunset when some of them started saying that we needed to go inside as to avoid the guy who takes children. He probably had some specific name but I don't remember it so I apologize, but anyways, being rather skeptical I asked them what they meant. I assumed that it was some old wives tale meant to scare the children inside, but they ended up describing some guy with like a hook for a hand or something who came and took children into the night and talking about all the specific instances of other children they knew who had been taken. They had this air to them when they told the story that no other playground rumor has matched, as they all seemingly had experience with it, or had seen it, or knew people who had gone missing because of it. This reservation is pretty much in the middle of nowhere too so it especially unnerved me. It's possible they could have been having fun at my expense, but if they were, they really did a great job at not breaking character. Also if they were lying, I feel like they would have been actively trying to scare me but they seemed pretty nonchalant about it. Presumably if this thing takes children and disappears them, and it's real, and not just a trafficker or something, it could be some kind of skinwalker. Anyways, thanks for reading. Weird Experience Inside the Grand Canyon We were looking for a free place to park and sleep so we just randomly drove to a camping area that was deeply inside the Grand Canyon. Things started to get weird as we were approaching to the camping site, we passed what it looked like an abandoned town where there was this entrance with dirt road that would drive into the canyon. All the houses were boarded up and abandoned. There was only one station in the radio and it had a weird very outdated and possible racist song playing like from the 1920s. It was late and there was no moon, so we drove around 30 minutes in pitch dark down the canyon until we reached the camping site. The camping site was like an opening as we reached the bottom and there were like five wooden tents. Sparse around the area in a circular fashion. We drove around in a circle illuminating everything to notice our surroundings and then parked in the middle and made a campfire. As we were hanging out in the campfire, my wife noticed a reflection in one of the wooden tents. It seemed like a piece of metal was hanging and it was glaring back the red back lights of the car. As I noticed it I had the urge to point it with my flashlight and when I did, it appeared to be that there was another reflection under it reflecting the light of my flashlight. So I became confused and started to move my flashlight in a pattern like I'm waving and notice the reflection waving back. But the reflection was like 250 milliseconds slower so I did it many times confirming that there was some strange lag in the reflection that put me really uneasy because I couldn't understand why there would be a lag. As I'm perplexed by what's happening, 
We notice now actual flashlights from where there was a reflection so we felt relieved as we noticed that someone there so we just turned around and awaited for what we assume was a park ranger. We could see a couple of flashlights bouncing at a near distance like 150 feet like people were walking toward us. But, after a minute or so, we noticed that the flashlights just kept bouncing around and no one was approaching, they were just be pretending to be approaching. Also to add there was a dead silence so this made it even more strange. At that point, we immediately panicked at all the strange things that were happening so we just ran inside the car and drove away. For a week now my girlfriend has seen a humanoid slimy creature on all four with their jaw dislocated digging in her neighbor's trash can and backyard. She saw it tonight again while it's pouring outside but she saw it while it ran and didn't get the chance to record it and the neighbors shut their blinds at that moment so she knew they saw it too and she made sure everything was locked. We aren't sure if maybe it's a deformed animal or skinwalker she's in Iowa Des Moines. The first time she saw it she made eye contact and she was terrified and hid in her room and said it wouldn't stop knocking at her windows and then heard what sounded like a can scrapping the pavement as it left. English isn't my first language so sorry for grammar and spelling if I did spell anything wrong. I know my grandma is like A. I am just so bad at writing but I tried. I never believed in skinwalkers before the night. That horrible night. West Virginia has been home to my family for generations, ever since the first settlers came here in the 1700s. In fact, I'm the first of my family to live outside of Virginia since coming here and my son is the first born outside the state. In all that time, stories of skinwalkers were of course passed down from the natives and through my family. My great, great grandmother was a native, but I never believed them. I've spent the last three months staying at a cabin my dad used to own out in the woods. Solar panels at Al. Quiet, peaceful and far away from all the BS going on in the world. My wife doesn't really enjoy it all that much since she's got a bit too much of the city in her. And our son, at six months, is too young to care. The cabin is rather nice, as far as most cabins go. Two bedrooms, a kitchen and even a small bath slash shower combo. The front of the cabin had a small porch with a bench and light. Simple. Other than the driveway and road leading up to the cabin, there is a four meter clearing surrounding it which itself is surrounded by thick forest. The only other buildings are the tool shed and the waste tank. The nearest town was maybe 40 miles away. Not really that isolated, but isolated enough that it didn't really matter. The night in question happened just last week. We'd just come back after spending the day visiting my mother and were more than ready to just call it a day. Jack, my son, was already asleep which made it easier for us to settle down and my wife was practically falling asleep herself. For context we didn't get back to the cabin until well past 10.30, and we'd been up since 5 that morning. So while she put Jack to bed, I went out onto the porch for a quick smoke. The wife doesn't really like me smoking, so I usually take a quick one last thing on the porch where she doesn't have to smell the smoke. Normally I just sit there for a good 20, 30 minutes not really caring all that much about what's going on. Sometimes I'll try to see if I can hear coyotes or wolves though this night it was oddly quiet. Admittedly, I wasn't really trying but coyotes especially were common enough that it was rare not to hear a pack of them this far out into the forest. I quickly finished and was about to go inside when I heard a coyote call coming from the forest. The weird thing is, it sounded like the coyote was right in front of the cabin. Then I realized that it didn't really sound like a coyote at all. It sounded like someone making a coyote call. And it was coming from just within the forest, where I couldn't see anything. No one was supposed to be out here but me and my family, 
But there was someone in the forest right now making coyote noises. What if they were some crazy person watching me and my family? I rushed inside to find my wife in a state of panic and holding Jack. What's going on? I asked her. The shocked and scared look on her face said it all. In there, she said, pointing towards the main bedroom. I rushed in but didn't see anything. Then I saw the window. It was open. And there was blood all over it. I rushed back to my wife and what she told me horrified me. Some sort of weird monster opened the window from the outside and started climbing in. She couldn't get a good look at it before grabbing Jack and getting out of there, but she described it as looking like a dog but bigger and a little like a person. It sounded like she was describing a werewolf. Either way, we couldn't stay there. We spent the next few days staying with my mother before I returned to the cabin. I went back with my brother and two of my uncles. They spent the journey there mocking me on running, knowing full well I kept a gun in the cabin at all times. It stopped when we got there. The cabin was destroyed. It had caught fire and had burned down. Surrounding what had been my cabin were coyote tracks. I don't know if it really was a skinwalker, but from what me and my wife witnessed I have no reason to doubt it. I lived in Farmington, New Mexico the last couple of years. Where I worked wasn't even a 10 minute walk from my apartment so I walked to work every day. After about a year of living there I started seeing a deer during my walk. It would stand in the field across the street and just watch me walk. It was a pretty busy street and it would just stand there and watch me very directly. I would see it once to three times a month. I don't know what normal behavior is for deer in New Mexico so I didn't know what to think. Three weeks ago I moved to California. I was born and raised and lived here for 18 years before moving away for the last seven years. In those 18 years I've seen one coyote even though there's quite a good population in the area I'm in. Just last weekend I was driving home after running some errands and there was one coyote standing in an empty lot on my street and it just watched me drive by. The speed limit is only 25 miles per hour on my street and I usually go slower when I'm not in a rush so I just watched him watch me drive by. A few nights, both before and after seeing that, the coyotes have been louder and closer to the house than ever before. They'll be screeching so loud it sounds like they're right in the front yard. Even my parents, who have been in this same house for the last 18 years said they've never heard them so loud or close. Could it be a skinwalker following me? Am I just freaking myself out? Or are these animal behaviors normal? This happened a few years ago, back when I was still in high school. I had this friend. He was a bit weird, a bit strange. Always talked about odd things like Bigfoot and Wendigos. Most everyone else would avoid him but he would often tell these spooky stories of people who went into the forest and saw things. Sometimes these people would go back into the forest and never come back out again. These stories always caught my interest as I got really deep into horror at the time so we both hung out a lot outside of school. We both lived on the same street as well, not far from each other, so we'd hang around during the holidays as well. So it was no surprise that that we spent all of Easter break together. The first few days we stayed in town, mostly staying in and around the local arcade since there wasn't much else to do. Small town and all that. But there was a small forest just south of the town no one really went to other than campers and hikers. It wasn't spooky or known for having a bad rep or anything, just most people didn't really care to go there. So after a few days me and my friend were bored and didn't want to spend all day at the arcade again, so he suggested we go to the forest. You know, explore it while telling horror stories to each other. It seemed like a fun idea at the time and I suppose it would be. 
After hopping on a bus that had a stop not far from there, we arrived at the forest not really expecting anything to happen. We'd scare each other using our stories before heading back into town before it got dark. And that's what happened for the first few hours. Like I said, we weren't expecting anything to happen, but we weren't expecting to find anything either. So imagine our surprise when we stumbled across this old beaten up house far from the nearest road. Windows all smashed in, no door and with stuff growing all over it. It was so out of place that at first we couldn't believe what we were seeing. Why was there a house all the way out here? It didn't make sense. Without thinking, my friend turned to me and told me he was going inside before walking towards the building. I didn't say anything, instead just followed him in. That was a mistake. There wasn't much inside, just dusty furniture, loads of cobwebs and the sort of stuff you'd expect to see in an abandoned house. Wasn't as scary as I thought it'd be. We were about to turn around and leave when we heard it. A howl from outside. I had never heard a sound like that in my life before or since. We were upstairs when we heard it, and a god thing too because it sounded like it was coming from the door we used to get inside. Another howl confirmed the fact that it wasn't just in our heads. My friend turned to me and said it was a coyote. I'd never seen a coyote before and was told that they weren't all that common in the area the town was due to overhunting. I called BS right before whatever it was howled for a third time. Then we heard it speak. Come down here, a voice called out. It wasn't a normal voice. It sounded like a smoker's voice, but with this odd high pitch, low pitch mix that made it sound unnatural, like something pretending to speak with a human voice. I know you're here, it said, why don't you come down here? We both just stood there, frozen in place. It spoke again, but I couldn't understand what it was saying. Then we heard a gunshot and someone shout get away from there. There was some sort of struggle before an elderly Native American came and found us. He never told us what was waiting for us downstairs, just told us it was evil and to never come back to the house. I still get nightmares of that day. Hey everyone, before I start typing, just know that before last night, I have had zero encounters with paranormal slash cryptids or anything of the sort, they interested me as stories and such, but I never put much stock into them. Two nights ago me and my friend Pat were out hunting in my timber in Illinois, it's a large area with miles of woods and fields surrounding, there isn't a town for about 10 to 15 minutes depending which direction you go. So anyways we were out last night at sunset and a bit beyond that when we started to get a weird feeling. We set our bait in the fields and things were fine, no bites or yotes though. We decided to move our bait closer to the timber and post up on top of some hay bales that sit along the timber line, we had our backs to the woods, we started hearing noises but chalked it up to raccoons, possums act. We also saw some deer right before we set up. We started to hear this weird whistling sound coming from off in the distance, it started as soon as we got near the area with the woods, at first it sounded like a bird, but it sounded weirdly metallic slash broken sounding and extremely consistent. We shrugged it off as a bird for a while and went back to our hunt, we both had our 15s and 9mm handguns, the whistling continued and it unnerved us more and more as it happened. It started happening across the field at another tree line. We started to get a feeling that we were being watched. We later theorized that the whistling might have been some sort of communication slash tracking method. We started to get more and more spooked till we left to go pick up some friends. We were gonna do a bonfire there. So we head back to the car which is parked along another section of the woods. And all of a sudden everything goes silent. The wind stops. The birds stop. The bugs stop. Silence. Then all of a sudden we hear the whistling again and it's coming from every section of the woods, and there's rustling coming from everywhere. We jump in the car fast and haul us out of there. We go and pick up our friends, 
who don't really believe us, Abby and Cody believe in cryptids and the paranormal, but think we might be imagining things, while Ariel thinks we're just being paranoid, so anyways we pick them up and head back to the area, we call it the Moody Farm BTW, and they want to check things out. So we load up the rifles, distribute guns act, and head out. Abby and Ariel stayed back at the car while Pat, Cody, and I went out and looked around. The whistling started as soon as we got out there and Cody started to realize that maybe we weren't lying slash playing a prank. This is where things start to really start pinging my danger signals like crazy, we push farther along the trail and start looking for where our bait is located. Before we left the last time we said out loud that we'd check it when we got back, we reach the bait and we still hear the whistles. I get this random thought that maybe the bait is now being used for us instead of coyotes. Cody saw the eyes this time too and was starting to freak a bit. We pushed farther in and we hear this strange noise. I call for a halt and pat and I set up as good as a perimeter as we can, instructing Cody to watch the flank. I call out to the woods instructing whoever is out there to come out, that they're on private property and that I am armed and will shoot if I feel threatened. Suddenly Pat yells out WTF is that thing. I snap over to look and I see this blur of movement from behind the hay bales. It was covered in shadows and I couldn't see it super clearly, but to me it seemed like if something that was 8 or 9 feet tall was trying to hunch over to around 6 and it's moving pretty fast. I yell out for everyone to move and I pop 3 shots off at it with my rifle. At first we're moving swiftly but at high ready, we have Pat out front with Cody in the middle. Pat's watching the woods while Cody is trying to cover the bean field. I'm watching flank. We're trying to get back to the group. I catch another blur and pop of another three, trying to lay down some suppressing fire to whatever TF is now following us. The whistles start to ring out loud now and I hear a large cracking noise from the woods and I give the order to run. We start running in the same marching order, Pat, Cody, me. Every 25 feet or so it'd turn and fire off a few rounds into the woods, in hopes of scaring off slash covering our asses against whatever it is. We get back to the car and Ariel instantly thinks we're messing with them. We load up and haul us out of there. It might be worth mentioning we saw a group of deer in the entrance to the field both times before all this started. We drove up to the barnyard where we were gonna have our fire and tried to calm down a bit, but it doesn't end there. We believe we were chased all the way up to the barnyard. I didn't really see any of what was happening next cause I was reloading mags slash messing with other stuff. But Pat and Cody call out that they saw something look around the corner of one of the barn-like buildings and then slink back away. They also claim to have seen some sort of face looking at us through a hole in a wall. I make the call to leave and we start to head out, except for some reason Abby can't see out her rear mirror and has to have Pat direct her out, so he's out there extremely exposed trying to guide her car out. I pull up close to them and then jump out trying to help cover slash get some extra eyes out there. We eventually make it out and are driving off back to my house which is only about 3 to 5 minutes away. Flash forward to the next day around noon 1 pmish and I get the great idea to go out there alone and check the bait piles. I never made it to the bait, the whistling started pretty quickly and then I heard sounds like something running through the woods and crashing through stuff, I've never ran so fast in my life I swear. I've had this strange sense of dread since then, thankfully it's gone now cause it's making me extremely paranoid. I don't know what you guys think about this. But there's my story. For the last 10 years me and my wife have owned and worked on a cattle farm. It's a decent sized herd we use for the meat and though it's been tough the last few years we're making enough to get by comfortably. A few months ago we welcomed our baby girl, hopefully the first of many kids and grandkids, so my wife was stuck raising her while I managed the farm alone. I didn't mind since cattle are normally pretty easy to handle. 
This particular day was different. The herd was skittish and on alert the entire day, which cattle don't normally do unless they smell something they don't like. I assumed there were coyotes somewhere nearby, but for some reason I couldn't hear them. Coyotes are usually pretty loud, so this was really unnerving. I would make regular patrols around my land to make sure nothing was where it shouldn't be, usually finding nothing. It was getting pretty late by the time I decided to take one last patrol around the farm. It was already pretty dark, so I wasn't expecting to see much. I was at the opposite side of the farm away from the house when I thought I heard a voice come from in front of me. I was a little confused. We live in the middle of nowhere miles from the nearest town and two miles from the nearest homestead. It couldn't have been my wife since she was back in the house, leaving me wondering who it was in front of me. I started approaching carefully, only to begin recognizing the voice. It was my wife. I began wondering why she was all the way out here rather than with our daughter, until I got closer to the figure standing in front of me. Whoever, or whatever they were, it wasn't my wife. Their back was turned, but I could clearly see they were wearing some sort of fur coat. I stopped before I could get too close and stuttered hello? The figure didn't answer me, didn't even seem to hear me. Hello, I asked again louder this time. I wish I hadn't. The figure turned and I clearly saw what it looked like. It looked like a horrifying, misshapen version of my wife, as if she'd been crudely made out of clay. Whatever it was, it didn't speak. Instead it smiled and started walking towards me. But not like a normal person would, like it wasn't used to walking on two legs. It walked slowly as I stood there frozen in fear. One step, then another, then another. I tried to scream, to move. Then it looked me in the eyes and said, Baby? Why don't you come over here and help me? It sounded exactly like my wife. But I suddenly found myself able to move. It wanted me to approach it. But I ran. It took me minutes to make it back to the house. But just as I was about to enter I heard a coyote call out in the distance. I hadn't heard coyotes all day and now I was hearing them. I had to make the choice to either protect my herd or my family and I chose the latter. I love my cows, I do. But my family comes first. I found my wife in the living room, already having put our daughter to bed. I quickly forced her upstairs and barricaded all three of us in the bedroom. I didn't have time to explain when we heard knocking at the front door and then we heard the same voice call out to me. Baby, I'm cold. Please let me in. It still sounded exactly like my wife who was now standing right next to me. She asked me what was happening but I had no answers for her. The thing whatever it was kept banging on the doors and windows, occasionally trying to convince me to let it in. Sometimes it would be replaced by coyote calls, but usually the only thing we could hear was that thing using the voice of my wife. The very next morning it had gone, and three of my cows had been killed. Although skinwalkers are generally believed to prey only on Native Americans, there are recent reports from Anglos claiming they had encountered skinwalker while driving on or near tribal lands. One New Mexico Highway Patrol officer told us that while patrolling a stretch of highway south of Gallup, New Mexico, he had had two separate encounters with a ghastly creature that seemingly attached itself to the door of his vehicle. During the first encounter, the veteran law enforcement officer said the unearthly being appeared to be wearing a ghostly mask as it kept pace with his patrol car. To his horror, he realized that the ghoulish specter wasn't attached to his door after all. Instead, he said, it was running alongside his vehicle as he cruised down the highway at a high rate of speed. The officer still patrols the same stretch of highway and that he says is petrified every time he enters the area.
I was once surrounded by a family of skinwalkers. This happened earlier this year when I was driving back home from a three-day work trip and was driving through North Carolina when my truck ran out of fuel. It was a stupid ass mistake that I should have kept an eye on. To make things worse, the car stopped in an area covered in forest miles away from the nearest gas station. After making a few calls, all I could do was wait. It was already dark when I thought I spotted someone a good distance in front of me. It looked like a person standing in the middle of the road. I couldn't see if they were looking at me or not. But they were just standing there not moving. I decided to stay in my truck as I wasn't sure about what to do. This turned out to be a good idea as I very quickly spotted something moving in the forest to the right of my truck. Again, I couldn't clearly see what it was, but it did look as if there was a person trying to keep low to the ground and again on my left. Before I could see what either of the things or people or whatever they were, a large coyote jumped onto the front of my car. It started howling and growling at me, trying to break through the front window. Then something hit the driver's side window. I turned to look, and saw what could only be described as a monster. It was a person. But they had the legs and arms of a coyote and their face was all messed up, like if a child tried to make a human face out of clay. Whatever it was smiled, showing me the sharp teeth that filled its mouth. I didn't dare look at the passenger side window as I heard something hit it. The monster was about to open my door when a light came from behind. The rescue truck had arrived to pick me up. The light must have scared the things surrounding me because they all ran off back into the forest. I looked in front of me and whoever was standing out in the middle of the road had gone. The driver who'd come to get me had told me that this occasionally happens and that it's probably best not to talk about it to anyone. He told me that none of the locals use that road after dark. Now I know why. So I'm Cherokee, I live in northeastern Oklahoma. And I think my roommates and I have encountered a skinwalker. We live in a really small neighborhood and at night, my roommate takes her small dog out into the front yard to let her go to the bathroom. It was around 4 AM when my roommate went outside with her dog like usual and she saw something walking at the end of our driveway, which is maybe 50 to 60 feet long. Her description of what she saw was something on four legs that didn't look like it had a head but she was without her glasses and in the dark. She and her dog hid by our other roomie's car until it walked further up the road and then she grabbed her dog and booked it inside. I thought that was weird jokingly said it could have been a skinwalker, then we just sort of teetered off from there. Fast forward to about two nights ago. My roommate is at work so I take her dog outside and am standing in our front yard. It's dark out and suddenly, her dog, which is a very small dorky, takes a few steps and barks and then I hear my dad talking from a few feet away. My dad lives about an hour away and I rarely see my dad. So there's no way it's was really him. I told my roommate's dog to hush and I look around but none of my neighbors are outside. It's just me and my roommate's dog. She keeps barking and I felt this sense of dread so I quickly usher her inside and I closed our curtains. I'm not sure if it is a skinwalker but it mimicked my dad and it was clear as day. I don't know much about any Cherokee legends, as I grew up away from my culture but my first thought was skinwalker. Let me know what y'all think. I'm not sure if this belongs in this sub, or where I should repost it, just looking for some guidance, not sure what is going on. I live in the suburbs in Arizona, right by a mountain preserve. There are plenty of washes around, we get coyotes, bobcats, raccoons, the usual. We have plenty of chickens and five dogs. One wolf dog, one big male Akita, three Anatolian Shepherds, two are male puppies though. The dogs are inside dogs, but we let them into the yard and they have free roam. 
We have a six foot wall around a large yard. We have neighbors on all three sides of the wall. One of the houses to the side is vacant, and the one directly behind us the owner hasn't been home for about a month. On both sides of his house is a wash. About a week ago at dusk, my sister had called for all the dogs to come inside. She saw one of the pups walking away from her and into some bushes out of sight and called to it. I asked her what she was calling to, and she said the pup. I said no, Hess right here. Which he was. All the dogs were accounted for. We just brushed it off as strange but didn't think much of it. Last night, around 12, 30 at night, my father and I are awake in the family room. We hear a large bang from outside, which sounds like a trash can lid closing. So we send out the Akita, and we grab lights and head outside. We check the trash cans, nothing is disturbed as far as we can tell. I notice my sister has come to the door because she heard the bang too. I head back in to talk to her, when my dad pops his head in and asks if we let out the puppies. We say no, and he gets mad and responds that he's right there outside. The Akita we let outside is standing next to my father. Our four other dogs are laying right inside. We watch as what is not our pup, but looks like his backside, walk behind our greenhouse and out of sight. The same dog that my sister had seen the other day. Same size. Same color. Same curly tail. Both times, we only saw its backside. There's no chance this breed is running wild in Arizona. That pup has also recently gotten a scar across his muzzle, but we thought it was from the other dogs picking on him more than usual lately. He is also the only dog that barks at his reflection at night in the windows. Our dogs usually run around the yard day or night playing. In the past few days they have been hanging around the door while they are outside, or around us when we go outside. They have been uncomfortable recently, which is weird for them. The five together in the yard fear nothing. The smallest are literally the two male puppies weighing in at 70 pounds each. What we saw looked exactly like him. ATL East what we saw which was his backside. We didn't follow because of everything I read on these subs say not to. And not knowing what it was I wasn't about to take that chance without some guidance. There is no chance this is a wild dog hopping our six foot fence. There are no wild Anatolian shepherds in the area, it's more of a rare breed. Any thoughts on what it could be or what it wants? Also side note, we usually don't hear other dogs barking at night. We've heard more than ever recently, but only on days that we have not seen the dog. Updates. From dusk to dawn one of us goes out and walks with the dogs, we also bought a new stronger flashlight that lights up the area pretty nicely. We have cut slash cleaned up a lot of the brush so there's less hiding spots. However when we walk the dogs at night, they do their business and head back to the door even before we do. Have never known them to not want to be outside. Have not seen anything since the two sightings, although it's only been a few days. We have heard on two different nights, a large pack of coyotes in the neighborhood, and even heard they got two neighbor's dogs. And when I say here, I mean it's 1 a.m. and we hear the howling and fighting and the losing side. The coyotes are not the ones making the dogs uncomfortable. We had one jump the wall in the past and all of our dogs went after it. It couldn't get back over fast enough. So still concerned because they aren't comfortable again yet and not sure why. We'll update again if we see something else. So I'm gonna sum up my experience real quick. Brother wanted to show me some bridge that he said had spooky stuff happen on. Didn't believe him, went, nothing happened for a while then stuff started. First I heard like some woman scream from far off, which they didn't apparently, later I heard a quick and short whistle from under the bridge somewhere. 
and later we decided it was time to leave as I got in the car I looked out on the right and in the shrubs somewhere I saw two glowing red eyes. Stared at each other for a second then whatever it was ran away into the trees. Told my brother a second later and he said they always leave whenever they see the red eyes. Like as if it was some common occurrence, so was this a skinwalker? From what I've heard it sounds like it but I'm just trying to figure out what the hell I just heard and saw. Also for location I'm in a very undeveloped country part of Texas, lots of trees and shrubs etc where we were. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.